here on the record and the time is 1026. Today is March 2nd, 2020. This is the video deposition of N.H. Vickery and the matter of Myra Martinez versus Sheriff Mike Williams et al. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record and the court reporter will swear in the witness. Kirby Johnson on behalf of the plaintiff, Myra Martinez. Sean Granite for Defendants Vickery, Andres, and Chastain. Gabby Young on behalf of the Sheriff, Mike Williams. With the gentleman on the Mike phone. Oh. <laughs> Sean Cologne from the law office of Luke Leroux on behalf of Emperor's Inc. Uh, <clears throat> doing business at Scores. John Phillips also on behalf of the plaintiff. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this clause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Good morning, Officer Vickery. Um, will you please state your full name for the record? Nathan Harrison Vickery. Thank you. And now, uh, is it, it's Officer Vickery, is that correct? Correct, yes. Sir. Okay. Uh, Officer Vickery, I, I think I know the answer to this, but have you, had your, have you ever had your deposition taken before? I have. Okay. When's the last time you had your deposition taken? In this case, was uh, 2000, I believe it was 16. Okay, so it's so it's been a little little bit of time. Um, just before we begin, I'll just go over some general ground rules with you. As you can see, uh, we have a court reporter here. She's typing down everything that's being said. Uh, she's very good at what she does, and she can type down extremely fast. But one thing that she can't do is type down when two people are talking at the same time. And so throughout the course of this deposition, you may know where I'm going with my question, and it's just natural in conversation to answer it before I've completed my question. However, because she's typing everything down, I just ask that you let me complete my question before you provide an answer. Okay. Okay, very good. And if you would, provide verbal responses just like you did that. Okay. Too. All right, very good. If at any point in time you need to take a break, please just let me know. Um, would be happy to accommodate. The only thing is if there's a pending question, I ask that you just answer the question before we take a break. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, Officer Vickery, have you uh, reviewed anything uh, prior to today's deposition? I have. Okay, and what, what have you reviewed? <clears throat> the arrest docket, uh, the RTR, uh, the video of integrity interview, the video of the parking lot, um, and my previous deposition. Okay. Officer Vickery, can you tell me, uh, what is your date of birth? 7-17-87. And what is your current address? Business address. Um, Correct. 501 yes, East Bay Street. Thank you. Are you married? I am. Okay. Do you have any children? I do. And how old? How many? One. And how old? 18 months. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me uh, a little bit about your educational history? I uh, graduated from high school have a little over 60 hours of uh, college credits. Where'd you go to high school? I was actually homeschooled. What year did you graduate? 2005. And you said you had some college credit? Yes, sir. Where did you go, where did you attend college? FSCJ. And how many credits was that, I'm sorry? I was a little over 60. A little over 60? Yes, sir. Did you have, uh, what were you studying at F SCJ? It was criminal justice technologies. And you did not graduate from FSCJ? No, with an um, associate's, no sir. Okay. Following FSCJ, where, where did you go after that? Uh, I was actually currently working for JSO when I was doing that. Okay, so you were working for JSO when you were going to school at FSCJ. Correct. What were you doing at uh, JSO? Community service officer. When did you start as a community service officer? September 18th of 2006. And what were some of your job duties as a community service officer? Traffic control, traffic crashes, writing the reports, writing citations for those that when they applied uh, traffic control for special events, Jags games, monster truck, that sort of thing. Okay. So it was centered primarily around traffic? Correct. Okay. How long were you a CSO? From September to of 2006 to, it was about four and a half years, so it would have been August, I'm sorry, April of 
2011. Did you have any training uh, to be a CSO? We went through, it was a, uh, if I'm estimating, I think it was approximately a four month academy. Could now, we, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but could we take a, a short break, please? Certainly. Thanks. We're off record to 1031. Clear back of the record at 1047. All right. All right, Officer Vickery, I think you, we had just left off. You told me that you did a four month training uh, at the academy for your CSO. I believe it was approximately four months. Okay. Do you, can you tell me generally how that training, what, what that training entailed? Uh, it was the majority of traffic related um, things, such as traffic crash reports, um, even scenario based um, traffic crashes. Uh, we had, I believe it was 40 hours of very basic defensive tactics because we didn't have any, you know. Um, pepper spray or taser, or OC spray or taser, anything to that nature. Okay. So. Okay. As your time uh, as a community service officer, were you ever in any sort of physical altercation with any, uh, any individuals? I think I put my hands on one person that about in the four and a half years. Okay. Okay. Did you ever, did you strike that person? No, sir. Okay. Officer Vickery, uh, after you left, uh, well, you worked for the CSO for four and a half years. Where did you work after that? I went to corrections. Okay. Did you take have any additional training when you made the transition? I did. There was another academy. Okay. Uh, I, I should have asked you this earlier, but the academy that you went to for the CSO, was that specifically for community service officers? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you did some more training when you transitioned to become a corrections officer, correct? Correct. Okay. Now tell me about the training that you took when you became a corrections officer. It was approximately a six-month period, and we went through training specific to correctional facilities um, and how to an handle inmates and those sort of things. Okay. How long were you a corrections officer? It was close to another four and a half years approximately. Uh, it was April of 11 to August of 15. Okay. In August of 2015, uh, you left the corrections uh, officer. Where, where did you go next? To the police academy. Okay. And that is to become a full-time police officer? Correct. Okay. Now, is the police academy uh, that you went to to become a police officer different from the academies that you went to for both the CSO and for the corrections? It would have, I dropped into what they call the orientation class, so it would have been, I already had my law enforcement, um, uh, basic law enforcement certification at that point, and so I went in just for the JSO specific portion of the academy. And what does the JSO specific portion of the academy entail? If you can recall, it's specific to JSO documents, um, our report writing system, our dispatch system, um, our policies and procedures. Did you say writing? Yeah, like report writing. Okay. Correct. And then policy and procedures, specific to JSO. Correct. Okay. Was there any other training? Um, specifically in regards to use of force? There's a uh, policy and procedure outline for that. Okay. Can you tell me, um, well, did you learn that at the academy? Yes, sir. Okay. What did they teach you about the uh, policy and procedures behind using force at the uh, academy? Section of form. Okay, answer. Specific to what? Specific to the use of force. Oh, the, well, there's deadly and non-deadly force. Non-deadly. Objection uh, to form. Can answer. <clears throat> it's force that does not cause great bodily harm or is not intended to cause great bodily harm or death. 
do you recall what JSO's specific policy and procedure is in regards to the, when you can use non-deadly force? When someone's under arrest and um, you have to use that force to overcome their resistance. Okay. Was there any physical training at the academy that you went to? Yes. Okay. Did any of that physical training involve a scenario, um, a training sort of simulation that would uh, that would mirror a someone who would be using uh, or someone who would be resisting arrest, um, and then you would have to practice using the deadly force or non-deadly force. Yes, um, to a certain extent, uh, there would be. Okay. And how, how long did that happen? Uh, how long did that training go on? That was, uh, by FDLE standards, uh, 80 hours. Okay. Can you, can you kind of just go into more detail for me as to what that training entailed for those 80 hours? Uh, it involved uh, takedown techniques, handcuffing techniques, um, standard uh, striking, uh, you know, whether it be punches or kicks. How long were you in the academy um, from the time that you left the corrections um, to the time that you became a police officer? I believe it was approximately nine weeks. And do, did you graduate from the academy? Yes, sir. And when did you graduate from the academy? I don't recall the date. It was approximately nine weeks after. Okay. But you started in August? Yes, sir. Of 2015? Correct. So just doing the math, would that have been sometime maybe around February of 2016? Uh, that would have been when I completed my field training. Okay. Okay. So, so actually being out of the academy was nine weeks from August, uh, whatever the date was in August that I started. Okay. So you go to the police academy for nine weeks and then you presumably you start your field training? Correct. Okay. Tell me about your field training and what all that entailed. It is four phases, um, three different training officers, and I don't remember the exact period of time. It's usually around uh, three work cycles a piece, so about 15 days if, I, if I'm guessing right. And what would you be doing during these, this field training? Uh, riding with an officer, uh, so handling calls for service. Were you the one actually responding to the calls or were you riding along with an officer who was responding to the calls? So each phase gradually gets more and more involved. Okay. So day one, I'd be riding next to him. Um, he'd be, you know, I would talk to people, but he would kind of drive uh, the call and then the last phase it would be me handling everything and him observing. Very good and I think you said there were four phases? Correct. Okay and three different training officers? That's correct. Do you recall the names of your training officers? Uh, Officer O'Neill was the first one, uh, Officer Kathman was the second and then Officer Scarborough was the third and then back to Officer O'Neill for the fourth phase. And the field training was approximately 15 days? Uh, for each one, for, for each cycle. For each or phase. For each phase, excuse me. Okay, very good. So four phases, 15 days a piece approximately, so about two months, 60 days or so? Sounds close. Okay, all right, very good. And when did you complete your field training? It was the beginning of February. February of 2016? Correct. All right. During your field training, um, was there ever an instance where you, um, where either you or your officer that was training you had to use force on a suspect or an arrestee? One, okay. if 
I remember right. Do you mind describing that event for me? Um, somebody that was uh, trespassing from a convenience store. Um, he refused to leave, and so he was taken into custody, but not before he attempted to pull away and um, try to avoid arrest. Okay. And which of your training officers was with you during this time? Officer Scarborough. And did you apply any force or did Officer Scarborough apply the force during this incident? It was Officer Scarborough. Okay. Can you describe to me what you saw Officer Scarborough doing during this, uh, while he was using force? It just involved him um, putting his arm behind his back and um, throwing, uh, not throwing is the incorrect word, uh, um, pushing him up against the car to use the car as a barrier to get his hands behind his back. Did you witness Officer Scarborough strike that individual? No. And did you... Okay. Officer Scarborough, uh, he didn't... You didn't witness Officer Scarborough put that uh, the suspect's face into the ground or anything like that? No. Is that the only incident of force that you witnessed during your training? That I can remember, yes sir. Okay. Um, fair enough. Now I'm going to uh, switch gears a little bit and talk to you more specifically about what we're here to talk about, and that is uh, the incident that occurred within the Scores parking lot on or about April 27, 2016. Are you familiar with this incident? Yes sir. I'm just going to ask you from questions. I want you to answer them from your perspective, okay? From what you can recall. Okay. Officer Vickery, when were you first notified of the? Uh, when were you, when were you first told to, that you needed to go to scores or dispatched to go to scores? It would have been the day of by our dispatch via radio. Okay. Do you recall approximately what time that may have been? I couldn't give you a time. Okay. And I think I have here, we'll mark this as plaintiff's exhibit A. You mean one? One, I'm sorry. Here you go. Thank you. Would you like to? No, I, I saw it. Thank you. All right. Officer Vicker, I'm going to have you look at that. Are you familiar with what this, have you seen? This document before. Not in this exact format, but okay. sure. Can you tell me what information does that page tell us there? It says the complainant versus a um, drunk or on drugs employee refusing to leave. Okay. Um, specifically, uh, Officer Vickery, if you look at the top one here, I believe it says 16 04 27 incident initiated by Tamika Spaulding. Would that be the 911 call from scores to JSO? I had to guess that might be the receiving officer. Okay. All right. Now I want to go down here, and I have uh, circled. Oh, well, let's talk about the the time here. It says next to that it says 16:51, uh, which would have been about 4:51. Do you see that right next to the circle there? Yeah, 4:52. 16:52. 16. Is that the one? Yes. 16:52. Yes. Okay. All right. And then the next circle here that I've got on this, uh, it says 16-04-27, and the time is 16.53. Um, can you tell me what happened at, uh, at that time, based on this report? It would be uh, Officer Borshire arriving on the scene. 
Okay. And then, so that would have been at 4.53? Correct. PM. All right. And then this one right here, it looks like uh, at 16.59, which would have been six minutes later. Um, did you arrive on the scene? Is that what that says? Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Very good. So, just to be clear, um, you received a call from dispatch, and do you remember the signals that dispatch rang out to you? I read them from that sheet. Okay. And what were the signals that were, were out, that were given from dispatch? The actual number signals? Uh, 63 is, is how it came out. 63. And what does a signal 63 mean? Dispute. Okay. Um, was there also a signal two? Yes, sir, in the comments. Okay. And uh, what is a signal two? A drunk person. Okay. So from the dispatch call, you were aware that you needed to go to scores because there was an impaired... Well, did, were you aware that there was an impaired or intoxicated person there at the time? Just from the dispatch screen. Just from the dispatch screen. Okay. Um, and you were aware that there was a dispute going on? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a signal for a trespass? Now there is, not then. Okay. How would you have signaled uh, a trespass? Then? Yes. It all came under of, uh, 63, so under dispute. Okay. All right. And what is it now? What is the signal now for a trespass? 68. All right. So when you got this signal, 63, all you knew is that it was an impaired person there and there was a dispute. You did not necessarily go there um, knowing that this was a trespass situation. Is that fair? That's correct. Okay. Well, with the assumption, because it did say refusing to leave. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you get the call and Officer Bors Borisati gets the call as well. Is that correct? Correct. And then Officer Borisati arrives at approximately uh, 4.53, and then you arrive approximately six minutes later at 4.59. Does that sound about right? I believe that's what we read off the okay. paper yesterday. Very good. I, wanted, I want you to tell me what you witnessed upon arriving uh, to the scores parking lot. I saw Officer Borisati's uh, patrol vehicle. And then I saw uh, Ms. Martinez sitting on the curve of the parking lot. Okay. Did you see Officer Borisati at that time? No, I believe he was inside the business at that time. Where was Ms. Martinez? She was sitting on the sidewalk in front of the business. What was she doing? She was sitting on the curb. Just sitting there on the curb? Yes, sir. Okay. Was she... She wasn't screaming, she wasn't yelling? Not at this point, yes, sir. Okay. Did you witness any other individuals uh, at the scene? I didn't see anybody else at this point. Okay. Did you, at any point, see anybody else at, at, at the scores parking lot? Officer Borshada came out of the business. Okay. Um, when did Officer Borshada come out of the business? It was sometime after I arrived. So you arrive, Ms. Martinez is sitting on the curb. Um, do you have a conversation with Ms. Martinez? I do. And tell me about that conversation. Uh, just the questions that you start out asking someone when you arrive at the scene, what's going on, what's happening. Okay. And what do you recall what Ms. Martinez told you? She was upset about being fired on her first day of work. Okay. She was upset about being fired from her first day of work. Was she... Um, okay. Did you ask her any other questions? I couldn't tell you specific questions. Okay. Um, was it during this conversation that Officer Borisati came out? At some point, yes, sir. Okay. Well, how long were you talking to Ms. Martinez before Officer Boris Borisati came out, approximately? That would be a complete guess and estimate. If I had to estimate a couple of minutes. Okay, fair enough. And I know that this happened a long time ago, so that's that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so Officer Borisati exits the uh, establishment. Do you? Does he say something to you? Do you say something to him? 
how does that conversation begin? I don't remember if it was if he came out and jumped in the conversation with uh, Miss Martinez and I, or if uh, we spoke privately. Okay. So you, do you don't recall? Well, let me ask you. Do you recall what Officer Borisati and you discussed after he came outside of the building? At some point, we discussed the trespass. Okay. At some point, was that? while Ms. Martinez was still on the curb? Yes. Okay. What do you recall specifically from that conversation about the trespass? That the business uh, requested that she be trespassed. And that's what Officer Borisati told you? Yes. Did you ever talk to anybody who worked for the business? I did not. So to the best of your knowledge, you're the entirety of, of your belief that she should have been removed from the property was based upon what Officer Borisati had told you? That is correct. Okay. So you didn't talk to uh, the manager or any other workers that were there? No. At any point in time? No. Okay. Do you recall specifically what Officer Borisati told you? Um, about what the managers may have said about Ms. Martinez? Mm, not specifics that I can remember. Okay. Generally, can you remember anything generally then? Uh, that he told you about what the about the conversation that Officer Borisati may have had with the owner or patrons within inside the something about her disturbing uh, patrons outside the business. Okay. Did Officer Borisati affirmatively tell you that the manager requested that she be trespassed? When he came outside, he told me that management would like her trespassed. Okay. All right. Did he say that in the presence of Ms. Martinez? Do you recall? I don't remember. Okay. At some point, um, well, after you were made aware that the owners of the building would like her to leave, um, what did you do next? She was at that point um, complaining that a purse was still inside the business. Um, so I stayed with her as Officer Borshad. I went to go get her purse. Okay. And did Officer Borshad go get her purse and then come back out? Yes. Okay. So her purse was inside the building? Yes. Um, was there any other personal items that she may have had that were in the building? Outside of her purse? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. It was just the purse. Okay. What is there, do you recall anything about a cell phone? I don't. Okay. So Officer Borisati goes and gets her items, brings them back out. Um, then what? Then what happens now? It was at that point we, at some point during the interaction with her that we advised her that she was trespassed or that she was going to be trespassed. Okay. Um, when you advised her that she was going to be trespassed, did you, uh, what did she say in response to that? Uh, she didn't understand why. She said she was fired on her first day of work and doesn't understand why she'd be trespassed. Okay. Um, at this point, did you notice um, any level of intoxication of Ms. Martinez? We did. Okay. And what made you aware of that? Just an odor of an alcoholic beverage from her breath. Okay. Um, prior to being informed that she was being trespassed, was there any erratic behavior that she was distributing or showing? What do you mean by erratic? I mean, as she was sitting on the curb, was she acting erratically? Was she yelling? Was she throwing things? Was she screaming? No, she wasn't yelling or throwing things. No. After she was told that she was being trespassed, um, did you advise her uh, as to what her options were, to what she could do?
yeah, her option is to leave the property. Okay. Did you, um, where, where, where was she? Well, let me ask you this. Do you know if, did she drive uh, to work on that day? I wasn't under the understanding that she did drive to work or that she had a vehicle up in the parking lot. Okay. Um, if she was to leave, um, presumably you would, you would say that she could not drive at uh, that point? Absolutely. Okay. Um, but she needed to leave the property. I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure out what options she had as we're far as in, leaving the property. Uh, we were advised that she had a ride on the way. She had a, a ride on the way? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, if there was a, a well, strike that. What was she doing when, when you were informed that she had a ride on the way? I don't remember at that current moment. Okay. Um, at some point, uh, so, so to be clear, you were, you were aware that she had a ride on the way? Yes. Okay. At some point, um, the decision gets made to arrest Ms. Martinez, correct? That's correct. Okay. And who makes that decision? Was that your decision or was that Officer Boris Sadi's decision? I believe that I looked over at Boris Sadi and told him that we would let's arrest her. Okay. So it was your decision to uh, arrest her at that point? If I remember right, yes, sir. Okay. And what were you arresting her for at that point? Trespassing. Okay. And that was based on what Officer Boris Sadi had told you that the manager had told him? That's correct. Okay. Um, after being informed that she was going to be placed under arrest, um, did you see a change in her behavior? Yes. Okay, tell me what happened uh, at that point. She became angry. Okay. Was she, did her physical actions change in any way? After a boar shot, I grabbed her by the arm, yes. Okay. Well, let's back up. Um, when you inform uh, Ms. Martinez that you're going to place her under arrest, was she still sitting on the curb at this point? No. Where was she at at this point? We had walked a uh, little ways into the parking lot, like in the parking stall area. Okay. And in the park and stall uh, area is where you informed her that she was going to be arrested? Y yes. Okay. Arrested. And what, what changed um, in your uh, decision making where uh, you decided to arrest her at that point? We'd given her multiple opportunities to leave the parking lot, and she was still refusing to leave. Okay. Um, and it was just because she was refusing to leave at that point is why she was being arrested? For an extended period of time, yes, okay. sir. Okay. But it was not, she wasn't being arrested because she was being violent or, or no. being intoxicated in public or anything like that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you were also aware that she had a ride on the way to scores at this time? That's why I understood, yes, sir. Okay. Um, okay. Um, why didn't you just let her wait for a ride to be there, to get there? The business advised that she was, they wanted her trespass, and so at that point she has to leave the property. Okay. At the time that uh, you advised her that you, she is being arrested for trespassing. Um, I believe you said Officer Borisati grabbed her right wrist. Was, was that the first physical contact uh, that you saw made between Ms. Martinez and, and any officer? Objection of form. Yes, it's the first contact. Okay. And describe what, what you saw Officer Borisati do. He grabbed her by her right wrist. Where was Ms. Martinez at this point? Were we still in the parking lot in the parking stall? Correct, yes. You described? Okay. Was she was Ms. Martinez standing? Was she squatting? Was she She was squatting. Okay. And Officer Borisati grabbed her wrist. Was it a right wrist? Yes. Okay. And did he say anything to her at that point? Advised her that she was under arrest. Okay. And what did she say in response, if anything? Don't you fucking touch me. Okay. And what happened next? Um, she began to pull away from Officer Borshade. Okay. 
Okay. And what did Officer Borisati do when she started to pull away? Held on to the wrist, held on to her arm. At some point, do you make contact with Ms. Martinez? Yes. Okay. Tell me, tell me how that happened and when you got involved with the effectuating of the arrest. As soon as she started pulling away. What did you do? I grabbed her left arm. Okay. What was your, uh, why were you grabbing her left arm at that point? To assist in detaining her. Okay. So both you and Officer Borisati were attempting to detain her uh, and ultimately place handcuffs on her and put her in the back of the police cruiser, is that? That was the goal, yes sir. That was the goal at that point, okay. At some point in time, um, was Miss Martinez, um, was she fighting back at, at some point or was she? She was actively resisting, yes. Actively resisting, and how was she actively resisting? By uh, making her body limp just like dead weight, uh, pulling away, squirming. Okay. Um, was she striking at any officers? Do we, or did you witness Miss Martinez attempt to strike at any officer? She attempted to kick us, yes. Okay. What about with her hands or, or did she try to punch anybody? I don't recall a specific punch. I mean, she was squirming, so her arms were flailing. Whether it was intentional, intentional or not at the time, I couldn't tell you. Okay. At some point uh, in time, did you get a handcuff uh, on her left wrist? I did. Okay. Was that was she still standing at that time, or was she had she uh, was she taken down at that point? She was standing or kneeling. I couldn't remember if it was while she was still kneeling or if she was standing up at that point. Okay. But before she was lying on her stomach, she had handcuffs on her left wrist. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. After placing the handcuff on, on her left wrist, um, was, was Ms. Martinez ultimately taken down? I'm sorry, say that one more time. After the handcuff was placed on her left wrist, mm -hmm. was Ms. Martinez ultimately taken down mm -hmm. to the pavement? Yes. Um, and what is that? Is that called a, a takedown technique? It was just taking someone to the ground. Okay. Is that something that you learn in the police academy? There are techniques for that, to take someone to the ground, yes. Okay. Did you take her to the ground or did Officer Borisati take her to the ground? Officer Borisati. Okay. Did you witness Officer Borisati take her to the ground? Yes. How did he do it? by grabbing her around her waist and then pulling her to the ground. Is that an approved technique that they teach you in the police academy? Objection form. Okay. Uh, that is not a specific technique. So no. Objection form. Okay. Uh, did I get an answer? Um, that is not a specific uh, objection to form, you can answer that is not a specific technique. So no objection to form, and I'm not sure I got an answer. I didn't, no. Okay. Tell me, can you describe to me how Officer Borisati took Ms. Martinez down? Grabbed her around the waist. Okay. After Ms. Martinez uh, was taken down to the ground, um, were you still in contact with her? I had lost contact with her at, uh, during the point where she went to the ground. Okay. Um, once she was on the ground, did you drop down to the ground as well to try to regain control? I did. Okay. And what were you specifically grabbing for at that point? Trying to grab that left wrist with the handcuff attached. Okay. And did you grab it? Eventually, yes. Yeah. Okay. At any point in time, was she swinging around the handcuff? Uh, while she went to the ground? At, uh, any, at any point in time, did you yeah. witness her swinging around the handcuff? Her arms were swinging with the handcuff attached, so yes. Okay. As she was on the ground, um, and you had grabbed a hold of her left wrist, uh, 
what was your body position compared to hers? Where were you positioned? Um, to the side of her, by her left side. Okay. Did you, um, were you applying force uh, to her back to keep her? Uh, eventually, contained? eventually I did place a knee on her back to keep her towards the ground, okay. keep her on the ground. Was it at that point that you decided um, to use your radio for uh, assistance? There were a few times I attempted to use my radio. Okay. And at the, why were you using your radio at that at that particular at these particular points? To call for backup. Okay. Um, were you in uh, strike that? What in the in the police academy? Do they train you on when to call for backup and how and when the appropriate time is? Not specifically, because you, whenever you deem it necessary. Okay. And what, do you remember what exactly you radioed out? I attempted to radio, nothing came through. Okay. I attempted to radio for a backup. And do you recall what you, well, at the time that, that your knee is on her back and she is on the ground, what is Officer Borisati doing? Attempted to gain control of her right arm. How was he doing that? By grabbing and applying strikes to her back. Did you witness Officer Borisati apply these strikes? I didn't. I'm sorry? I didn't. How many strikes did Officer Borisati apply? I don't remember the number. Can you give me an approximation? It'd be strictly an estimate. Eight, maybe. Okay. At any point in time, um, were any verbal commands given to Miss Martinez? Couldn't tell you specifics on the exact commands. Uh, not a, yeah, I get that. My go to is calm down, um, put your hands behind your back. That's what gets repeated normally when I talk. Okay. Do you have any specific recollection of saying those to Miss Martinez on this day? No independent recollection at this point, no. What about Officer Borisati? Did he give any verbal commands to Miss Martinez at any N point? Nothing I remember hearing today. You said that you, you witnessed maybe eight strikes from Officer Borisati. Um, these strikes, were they closed fisted? I couldn't recall specifically. Okay. Do you remember where on her body Officer Borisati was striking? The back. The police academy. Well, I'm going to ask you a little bit about <laughs> Officer Borisati's relationship. It was I believe that this event happened in April of 2016, and I think or April 2017. And I believe that we had established earlier that you became a full-time police officer, or even completed your field training February of uh, 2016. It is 2016. Yes. Um, so you had been a police officer for a couple of months at that point? That's correct. Okay. Um, how long had Officer Borisati been a, a police officer? The same amount of time. Okay. Did you guys go through the training academy together? He went through the full academy and then I jumped in in that nine week 
um, orientation period. Okay. And you were able to do just the nine week orientation period because you had already done the prior classes when you were either with the CSO or a corrections officer. That's correct. Okay. So you had gone through the same training as Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. Okay. But maybe at different times? Different time period, yes, sir. Okay. The training academy, um, do they teach you about um, strike, striking techniques? They do. Do they, do they tell you what is and what is um, allowable? By policy, yes. And what is the policy uh, as, as far as it relates to the number of strikes? There isn't one for number. Okay. What, what is the policy in regards to the amount of force used? It's the force necessary to overcome resistance. Okay. In your opinion, Officer Vickery, um, Did it take eight strikes to achieve that, that objective in this case? Objection to form. You can answer. It appeared that it did. Okay. It appeared that it did. After the strikes were applied. Um, did you witness Officer Borisati touch Miss Martinez's head at, at any point? Not from my independent recollection. Okay. Uh, after the strikes were applied, was Officer Borisati able to um, put her right hand in the handcuffs? He was able to get a right hand behind her back, yes. Okay. Um, at that point, um, following the strikes, uh, does Officer Borisati step away for, for a moment and leave you with Ms. Martinez? After the handcuffs were applied, yes. Okay. And why did Officer Borisati step away? I couldn't tell you. Um, at some point, Ms. Martinez is... Uh, taken from the from the parking lot and put into the back of the police cruiser how does she get up from the pavement me i picked her up okay and how did you pick her up by her arm okay which are handcuffed at this point yes okay and uh do you walk her straight to the back of your police car i do okay um what does Ms. Martinez do whenever you pick her up? At some point, she kicks me. Okay. Um, at some point as well, does Officer Borisati come back and engage with both you and Ms. Martinez? Objection. Okay. Yes. Okay. And what does Officer Borisati do at this point? Grabs her to help carry her back to the car or put her back to the car. Okay. Now, was, were, were you putting her in the back of your police car or in the back of Officer Borsati's police car? My car. Okay. And why, uh, why your car as opposed to Officer Borsati's? Uh, by the call, I was um, listed as the primary officer on that call. Okay. So we'll come back to that. But tell me, tell me briefly how that works as far as when you receive a call, who's primary, who's secondary. Walk me through that process. Dispatch makes that decision. Okay. So she assigns someone to be primary and assign uh, one or however many officers to be assisting. Okay. And whoever dispatch assigns, that's it throughout the completion of the arrest? Is that, is that true or, or can it change based on the circumstances? It can change. Okay. Um, Officer Borisati, and I think we you testified about this earlier, but Officer Borisati is the one who actually spoke with the manager inside of SCORES at the time? That's correct. Um, Officer Borisati uh, applied more force during the course of this arrest than you did. Is that fair? Objection to form. You can answer. Yes. Okay. Um, at, at some point, it, it seems to me, well, I'll strike that. At some point, would, would 
did it cross your mind that Officer Borisadi perhaps should be the primary officer on this? No. Okay. Um, as a police officer, are you allowed, to, well, what are the elements required for you to trespass, arrest somebody for trespassing? The business requests them to be trespassed. Okay. And did you hear anybody who works at the business tell her that she needs to be trespassed or not? No. Okay. All right. Going back to where we were, um, I believe you just picked Miss Martinez up off the ground. Her, she's handcuffed. She's walking back to your police vehicle. Um, at some point, does she make it in the back of your police cruiser? She does. Okay. And what happens when she's in the back of the police cruiser? She almost immediately starts kicking. Okay. Um, describe to me what, what she was doing. Um, kicking as... the door, the window, screaming. Okay. Um, were her hands, she was still handcuffed at this point? Yes. Okay. And at some point, does the decision get made um, that she needs to be hobbled? Yes. And who makes that decision? I don't remember who brought it up, to be honest with you. Okay. Who, who applied the hobble? Uh, Officer Borshade. And whose hobble was it? His. Did, uh, is there any sort of procedure involved before you apply uh, a hobble restraint? Prior to applying it? Yes. We apply, I mean, we, yeah, we apply it to people who are kicking, who are being violent or um, need another level of restraint. At some point in time, did, uh, did you contact uh, your supervisor uh, about, well, at the scene, still in the Scores parking lot, did you contact your supervisor or no. did, did you know if Officer Borsati contacted his supervisor? Yes, he, uh, Officer Borsati contacted his. And uh, what, when did Officer Borsati contact his supervising? Uh, it, it would have been before we attempted to apply the hobble. Would it have been after the strikes? Yes. Were you present during that conversation between Officer Borisati and his supervisor? Not that I remember. Okay. Would that be common to contact your supervisor if you were going to apply a hobble restraint? So for a TAR, a total appendage restraint, it is policy to advisor supervisor um, it's not for a hobble can you just explain to me the difference between what a hobble and a tar is a hobble is um, restraining strictly the feet um, a tar a total appendage appendage restraint would be restraining the feet and the hands together okay. was a tar applied to miss martinez no okay it was only uh, the hobble yes While you're still at scores, does any other officers arrive on the scene? Yes. Who are they? Well, officer Brown and uh, Officer Garriott, who was the PIC that day, or the uh, officer in charge. Okay. And who notified Officer Brown and PIC Gar Garriott uh, to go to scores? Officer Borshade, uh, or Officer Garriott was the one that Officer Borshade called, so he would have been the acting supervisor. Okay. Did you speak with uh, PIC Garriott at the scene? Yeah. And what did you uh, discuss? I don't remember specifics of what was discussed, just the incident in general. Okay. Did you inform PIC Garriott uh, at the scene that, Ms., uh, that Officer Boris Sadi had used a, a strikes on Ms. Martinez? Not that I remember specifically. Would that be something that you would typically notify somebody if you were describing that incident? Just if you were if you were informing your supervisor of an arrest that involved the use of force, would you describe that force to your supervisor? Yeah. But you did not in this particular instance. I mean, if it if it involved a response to resistance report, well, yeah, we would notify the supervisor. Okay. 
but you did not notify the PIC Garriott at the scene? I did not. Do you know if Officer Borsati notified them? Not that I remember. What about Officer Brown? Did you discuss the incident with Officer Brown? Only that I remember more specific to the hobble. Okay. Specifically to the hobble. What about the, uh, the force used by Officer Borisati? Did you discuss that with anybody at the scene of scores? Not that I remember, no, sir. Once the hobble was applied, was Ms. Martinez, she was still in the back of your police cruiser at that point? Yes. Okay. And then you, where do you go uh, from there? Uh, like leaving? Yes. Know? Straight to the jail. You go straight to the jail. Okay. And then do you go to the pretrial detention facility? Is that what it's called? That's correct. Sally Correct. Okay. Should we take yeah. a break? Yeah, let's take a break. We're at 11.37. We're back in the record at 11.49. All right. <clears throat> Officer Vickery, before we uh, just took that break, I think we had just uh, gotten to the point where you had, were transporting, whore, transporting her to the Sally Port. <laughs> That's so, correct. Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, I did want to ask you, though, before you got to, uh, before you left scores, um, did anybody, um, well, was fire and rescue called? No. Okay. Um, did anybody provide any sort of medical aid to Ms. Martinez at scores? Not physically, no. Okay. Did anybody ask if she was injured? I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was her response? No. And when did you ask her that? Sometime in the car. On the way to the Sally Port? I don't know if it was before or we left or on the way that we, on the way there. Okay. Do you remember specifically what you had asked her? No, not specifically. It normally goes with, you know, are you hurt? Do you need rescue? And you specifically recall her saying no to those? Yeah, she said she wasn't injured. She didn't complain of any injury. Okay. When you arrive at the Sally Port, what is the scene like when you when you arrive? Uh, we pull in. There's other uh, officers there and other um, uh, people waiting to go into the jail. Okay, you said uh, we pulled in. Did you and Miss Martinez get to the Sally Port prior to uh, Officer Borisati? We arrived at the same time. Okay. Um, all right. And there were other people that were preparing to be, I guess, sort of uh, taken into the jail? Yes. Okay. Arrestees, so to speak? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there were arresting officers that were with them? Correct. Okay. Um, what happens when you, when you arrive at the Sally Port? We start on the arrest docket. Okay. Let's talk about the arrest docket. Um, Who, who filled out, well, is this, let me ask you, do you recognize this? Yes, that's the arrest docket. Okay, and that's the arrest docket that you began writing uh, in the Sally Port. That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now, did you complete this entire form? Not the entire form. What portions of this form, as the arresting officer, uh, did you fill out? Everything except for the narrative. Okay. So all of this background information on, on page one and the first half of the second page? Uh, and all of this on the bottom of the third page you filled out? Correct. Okay. But you did not fill out the narrative? That's correct. Did you and Officer Borisati have a conversation about um, who would or who would not draft the narrative? Yeah, he said he would be willing to write the narrative while I did the uh, main portion 
uh, the body of the docket. Did he volunteer to do the narrative? If I remember right, he did. Okay. So you didn't ask him to do the narrative? Not that I remember. Okay. Um, is that common for the uh, primary officer to have somebody else write the narrative on the arrest and booking report? I don't know that I'd say common, but it happens. Is it? Is there any JSO policy and procedure about filling out these reports? Um, is there any protocol to follow when it no. comes to filling out these reports? Not specific to anybody else doing them that I'm aware of, no sir. Okay. Um, what about, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. So you filled out everything but the narrative. Um, officer, who filled out the, the narrative report? Officer Borshade. Okay. Throughout your career, how many times um, has a, a different officer filled out the narrative portion of an arrest report while you filled out the other parts? I don't know. A has it ever happened other than this incident? Yes. Okay. What kind of, uh, but you can't recall when or where? No, I couldn't recall specifics on it. Okay. Where you filled out, and I'm talking specifically about where you filled out the main report, everything but the narrative. That has happened before? That's happened before. Okay. Before this incident? I, I don't know if it happened before that incident or not. Okay, but it may, may have happened since this incident. Yes. Okay. And to the best of your knowledge, there is no policy or procedure, nor were you trained on whether or not that is okay? That I'm aware of. Okay. Um, Okay. And what was the what was the reason um, that Officer Borisati filled out the narrative and you did not? To expedite the whole process, and she was hobbled. Okay. Um, to expedite the process, was there a need to expedite the process? Not a specific need, just to get her uh, into the jail faster and get her legs undone from the hobble. Okay. Is it policy and procedure that you cannot remove a hobble until the arrest and booking report is completed? No. Okay. So you could have removed the hobble while you were still completing the report? Could have. Okay. So I'm just, I'm still I'm sorry, but I'm I'm trying to figure out what were you you were trying to expedite the process, but what were you expediting Objection. by having Officer Borisati fill out the narrative? Objection of form. To get her into the jail faster. Okay. Get her in the jail faster. Um, was there a line of people waiting to be processed into the jail? There was other people waiting. Okay. Would those people have been in line before Miss Martinez to be processed into the jail? Depending on if they were male or female. Okay. They take them in separately. Okay. Did you, um, well, did you review the narrative that Officer Borsati writ, wrote? I did. Okay. Um, did Officer Borsati write the narrative at the Sally Port while you were there? Yes. Okay. And you reviewed it at the Sally Port? Yes. Um, does, does Officer Borisati, when he's writing the narrative, does he write it, uh, is he speaking from your position or is he speaking from his position of what he witnessed? It appears that he's speaking from my position except for the quote that he had made that he had uh, written from his position. Is that common when writing these types of reports? Can't speak for anybody else. Is there any sort of JSO policy and procedure behind filling out these narrative reports, speaking from your perspective as the arresting officer as opposed to some other officer? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Would it be, would, it, would you say that it's commonplace that officers will um, speak from a different officer's pers perspective when filling out a narrative? I couldn't say that it's commonplace. I don't know how other officers operate all the time. 
Have you ever witnessed any other incident where somebody has filled out a narrative report on your behalf and spoke uh, and using your your first person, even though you did not write the actual narrative? I couldn't recall specifics on that. Is that a no? It, like Jackson. I said, I, did, I couldn't recall specifics on it. Okay. We'll come back to that. Um, So in the Sally Port, uh, Officer Borisati is filling out the narrative. Are you filling out the rest of the report while he's filling out the narrative? Yes. At the same time? Yes. Okay. And what is Miss Martinez doing at this point? It's still in the back of my patrol vehicle. Okay. Um, at this point, is she um, is she still causing a scene? Is she screaming? Is she kicking? Is she yelling? Is she I remember her being fairly calm in the back of the patrol vehicle while we are at the Sally Port. Okay. At some point, um, do you make the decision to remove the hobble? Yes, when she gets out of the vehicle. Okay. At that point, had the report already been completed? I believe so. Okay. You removed the hobble. Did, well, I shouldn't say that. Did, who removed the hobble from Miss Martinez? I did. You did? Okay. Um, was Officer Borisati present when you removed the hobble? He was in the Sally Port. I don't remember his how close he was to us. Okay. Once you removed the hobble, what did you do with Miss Martinez at that point? I don't remember if she was she continued sitting in the vehicle for a certain period of time, or if she came out of the vehicle and waited by the um, entry door to the jail. Okay. At some point, um, do you leave the Sally Port? Yes. Okay. When did you leave the Sally Port? Uh, when the report was completed and she was out of my vehicle. Okay. And after the hobble was removed? Yes. Okay. So remove the hobble. She gets out of the vehicle. She's standing there. The report is complete. You get in your car and drive away. Is that fair? That's correct. Okay. Is there anything that you needed to do on April 27, 2016, that evening? Yes. I had an appointment to be on. I'm sorry? I had a deployment to be on. And what, what do you mean by a deployment uh, to be on? It was a deployment with the robbery unit. Okay. And what time approximately was that deployment? I was supposed to be in the office at, I believe it was 7 p.m., if I remember right. And about what time did you leave the Sally Port? I, I think it was after that, after 7. So you leave the Sally Port, where do you go from there? Do you go straight to your deployment? The police memorial building to the uh, robbery office. Okay. Do you make any phone calls uh, once you leave the Sally Port? Yeah, after I left the Sally Port at some point. Okay. And who did you uh, notify your supervisor as to what happened? I did. And what did you inform uh, your supervisor? And this is Sergeant Weeks? Correct. And what did you inform Sergeant Weeks at the time? Infor informed him of the uh, force used at the uh, Park Lawless scores. What specifically uh, did you tell Sergeant Weeks about the amount of force used at? At that course? moment, there wasn't much specifics. It was a pretty short conversation. Okay. Can you tell me how that conversation went? Um, told him that I wanted to notify him about um, some force that was used in the parking lot of our previous call. You specifically rec recall uh, mentioning the parking lot? No, not specifically the parking lot, no. About what time did you make this call to Sergeant Weeks? I couldn't tell you. It was after the after I left the Sally Port and sometime that evening. Would it have been before your deployment? I don't remember if it was, I don't know if it was before I got to the deployment or if it was after I was on the deployment. Okay. But either way, it was the same day. 
of the incident. Yes. You call, you contacted Sergeant Weeks. And what was Sergeant Weeks' response when you told him about uh, that there was force used during the arrest? Um, it was a very quick, vague response. I, he said something to the effect of I'm aware of it or something to that effect and went on. He said I'm aware of it? If I remember right, yes, sir. Were you present, well, let me ask you, are you aware that there was a second incident that involved Officer Borisati and Miss Martinez that occurred in the Sally Port? Not at that time. Okay. No, you, weren't, you weren't aware of it at that time? No. Okay. Do you know if Sergeant Weeks was aware that there was a second incident? That I don't know. I didn't know at that time specifically, no. Okay. All right. Is it possible that Sergeant Weeks was thinking that you were calling to discuss the incident that occurred in the Sally Port? It could have been. Okay. Did you notify anybody else about what had happened in the Scores parking lot? No. What did, um, what did your supervisor tell you to do? Nothing at that point. It was like I said, a very quick conversation and we hung up. Why did you feel the need to contact your supervisor? Like I said, I wanted to make him aware of the force that was used. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you, would you notify your supervisor every single time force is used in the field? No, not necessarily. Why did you feel the need to notify him about this particular instance? I was questioning if an RTR should be written um, and the amount of force used. To be clear, at the time that you decided to make this telephone call, you had you had witnessed Officer Boris Sadi strike Miss Martinez about eight times in the parking lot. Yes. In the parking lot, yes. But at that point, um, did you, you at this point at the time that you made the phone call to your supervisor, you did not witness Officer Boris Sadi touch Miss Martinez's head in any way. No. Okay. So you didn't witness any him slamming her face into the pavement or anything like that. You did not witness it at the time that you made the phone call to your supervisor? No. Okay. So at the time that you called your supervisor, you had witnessed the strikes, and it was your belief that the strikes made you question whether or not the amount of force was used. Um, required you to notify your supervisor. Ejection of force. Yes. About the, uh, you said it, it, the use of force concerned you. Um, what was it about the force that concerned you? Uh, maybe the number of strikes, the Testified earlier that, that, that Officer Borisadi struck her in the back. Did you witness her witness Officer Borisadi strike her any other place? It was a lot in the back and side. Did the location of the punches on her body cause any concern to you? I don't believe it was the location. No. Okay. It was the it was the amount, primarily. Yep. Okay. Probably more concerned the amount.
at some point, well, yeah, at some point did you fill out a, a response to resistance report? I did. Okay, and what is a, just generally, what is a response to resistance report? It is a report documenting um, a use of force issue. I'm sorry, what's It that? was a report documenting a use of force. And this is a document that you would fill out as a witness to somebody who witnessed it? Uh, you fill, sorry. Uh, you could fill it out as the uh, one who used force, or um, and then you also fill it out as if you witness somebody using force, yes. Okay, and as you were filling this out, you filled it out from the perspective of somebody witnessing Officer Borisada using force on Ms. Martinez? That's correct. Okay. And what is the JSO policy and procedure behind writing these response to resistance reports? As far as why we need to write them or how to write them? Or? Uh, sure, we'll start with, with uh, why do you need to write these? Uh, when force use uh, causes, or, um, causes injury or the uh, person being arrested complains of injury. Okay. Did you, well, when did you fill out your response to resistance report? I believe it was the next day. Okay. I'm going to show you what will be marked as, is this two or is it three? You didn't mark the other one. I didn't mark the other one. Well, we can go back. Sure. I'll mark this one two. We'll mark the A and B as two and then we'll do the response to resistance is three. Thank you. All right. Do you mind perusing that for a minute? Are you familiar with what that document is? Yes, sir. And what is that document? It's the response to resistance report. Thank you. Um, now, does it, is it dated as to when it was completed? It's created on the 29th. Of April? April 29th, I'm sorry, yes, sir, on the uh, April 29th, 2016. Thank you. And the date of incident was on April 27th, 2016, is that correct? That is correct. So this report would have been filled out two days later? Um, yes, it was at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, so I was notified the next day. It was created, I guess, the second day in the middle of the night, if that, that makes sense. It does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. So really, it's on late into the second day. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Um, is there any sort of uh, JSO policy and procedure about the timing of when you're supposed to fill out these response to resistance reports? I believe it's by the end of shift. Okay. Um, is, there, is there a reason why you didn't fill out the uh, response to resistance by the end of the shift on April 27th? Yeah, I was advised by Sergeant Weeks not to fill out any further reports. Why, why would Sergeant Weeks tell you not to fill out a response to resistance report? I uh, was told that integrity was on the case and to not fill anything out until they were, they approved any other, any further reports. Okay. Is that consistent with your training that you can remember? I couldn't tell you about Sergeant's policy and, and integrity's policy. That's fair enough. Um. Sergeant Weeks told you not to fill it out because, I'm sorry, you said integrity? Yes, sir. Integrity was, was, was on it, so to speak? Correct. Um, did you speak with anybody on integrity? Not that same day. Okay. Um, but again, when, when you were talking to Sergeant Weeks, and I think we kind of established this earlier, is it possible that Sergeant Weeks, when he's talking about what, what IA is handling, um, that he could have been discussing referring solely to the incident that occurred in the Sally Port. You have to ask him, but yeah, it's possible. Okay. And it's integrity. Thank you. What did I say? IA. Sorry. It's okay. At some point, um, a video surfaced of the incident that occurred in the Scores parking lot. Are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. 
Were you, did you have you seen the video? I have. And it's a purports to be a dash cam video uh, covering the incident. When did you uh, see this uh, video? Um, within days after the incident. Okay. Do you? It wouldn't have been the same day of the incident, would it have been? I don't think it was the same day. Okay. What did you notice anything watching the video that you did not recall uh, as you witnessed it firsthand? Yes. And what what is that? The contacts are the push in the face to the ground. Okay. So you, upon reviewing the video, that's when you see Officer Borisati take Miss Martinez's head and put it into the pavement. I see him push her head towards the pavement, yes, sir. Okay. Fair enough. So at the time that you had called Sergeant Weeks with the concern of the amount of use of force, you had not seen this. You had not seen this video yet. That's correct. Okay. Did you feel like? Uh, well, what compelled you to call Sergeant Weeks? Protection form. I think we already discussed that. I mean, it was fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Did you ever ask Miss Martinez if she was on any sort of drugs? I don't recall if I asked her anything about drugs. What about uh, her level of intoxication? I asked her if she had anything to drink. Do you recall what her response was? If I, if I remember right, it was one cocktail. And to be clear, you never spoke with anybody else at SCORES other than Ms. Martinez and Officer Borisati or the other officers that showed up after she was arrested? Objection of one. Correct. Okay. Didn't talk, you, you did not talk to uh, the manager or any of the employees of SCORES? Objection of one. That's correct. Have you at any point uh, since, uh, since receiving the call to go to SCORES, talk to any of the employees at SCORES about this incident that you know of? No. So no follow-up after this incident? No. Okay. Do you know if uh, SCORES has surveillance cameras? I'm not sure. If, if there was, would you, did you request surveillance? I did not. Do you know if uh, Integrity requested surveillance? I'm not sure. Okay. How many times, uh, well, uh, is this your first call with Officer Borisati or have you guys been to calls before? No, we've been to calls before. Okay. Tell me about the prior calls between you and Officer Borsati. Couldn't tell you all the specifics on them. Okay. Um, were there any? Were there any that uh, you got hands on, so to speak, or they were, got, they were physical? Yes. Right. Can you do you mind describing those for me? Um, one was a domestic battery. Um, husband was under arrest and resisted. Okay. Um, did Officer Borisati uh, use force in, effectuate, in effecting that arrest? Uh, he, helped, he assisted with the takedown, but then the wife came out and wanted to try and um, save the husband, so then he had to get up and keep the wife off of me and him while I affected the, attempted to affect the arrest and did affect the arrest. And that was uh, a domestic battery situation? Correct. Okay. Did you witness Officer Borisati uh, use any strikes or pain compliance during that arrest? No. Is the incident that occurred at SCORES the first time that you witnessed Officer Borisati use pain compliance or strike somebody? That I can remember, yes.
sorry, let's read my notes real quick. Other than, um, I believe you said Miss Martinez kicked at you. Um, is there any other violent act that Miss Martinez did that you can recall? Not that I can remember of him. So no punches. No. Uh, no biting. Uh, there, from what I was informed by Officer Borshada, yeah, that's that's correct. He said that she attempted to uh, bite him. Good, but you did not witness that. No, I did not. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit now and go through the arrest and booking report with you. Um, we touched we touched on this earlier. Uh, poor Asadi did the narrative. You did the rest of it. And I just want, would like to go through it with you. And okay. then uh, I may ask you some questions as we go. Okay? Okay. The narrative section begins by saying, on 4-27-2016 at 16.50 hours, Officer A.A. A. Borisadi and I responded to a dispute involving an intoxicated individual. Um, again, that, it's confusing because it says Officer Borisadi and I, but really it's Officer Borisadi is the one writing this narrative. Objection to form. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. It says upon arriving at the listed location. Upon arriving at the listed location, I made contact with the suspect, Miss Martinez, in the parking lot. Was this when she was on the curb? Yes. Okay. The suspect stated she would recently move from Orlando, Florida, to Jacksonville, Florida. The suspect stated today was her first day of work at the establishment. She was suddenly told to leave by management. The suspect stated she still had some belongings in the establishment, such as her purse and identification. Uh, it should be noted that while speaking with the suspect, a strong odor of alcoholic beverage could be smelled emitting from her breath. Um, so she's sitting out front. Uh, she's got an alcoholic odor on her breath. Her stuff is inside of the club where she was employed at at the beginning of the day. Um, at that point, did she, did she advise you that she would like to get her things back? It was at some point when Officer Borshad and I were both talking to her that she did. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm going to read to you. It says the following is a statement from Officer Borisadi. Well, yeah. The following is a statement from Officer Borisadi and his interaction with the acting manager. It says, quote, I made contact with the acting manager, Mr. Jacob Madden, while Officer N.H. Vickery, 62. 64291 maintained contact with the suspect. The complainant stated the suspect showed up for her first day of work earlier today and decided to quit. The complainant stated that the suspect had four shots of a hundred proof alcoholic beverage prior to quitting. The complainant stated that he asked the suspect to leave numerous times, but she stayed in the parking lot of the establishment and refused. The complainant stated he would like to have the suspect trespass from the property since she was outside disturbing patrons. The complainant provided me with the suspect's purse which contained her identification. Officer Vickery, were you you were not present for any of that conversation between Officer Borisadi and anybody at Scores, were you? No. Okay. So, you did not witness Officer Borisadi make contact with the acting manager, Mr. Jacob Madden. I did not witness that. You did not witness Mr. Madden state that Miss Martinez had quote four shots of a hundred proof alcoholic beverage prior to quitting. I did not. Did you, you did not witness the complainant ask the suspect to leave numerous times? I did not. You didn't witness the complainant ask her to leave any times? I did not. You did not witness the complainant state that he would like to have the suspect trespass from the property? I did not. goes on to state that Officer Borisadi and I made contact with the suspect and informed her she was being trespassed from the property. Do you specific, do you remember telling her that she was trespassed from the property? I don't remember specifically who was the one that said it, 
to her. Again, Officer, Bo Officer Boris Sadi, speaking from your perspective, stated that the suspect became irate and belligerent and stated she was not wrong in this situation. Objection uh, form. Is that inaccurate? Was she irate and belligerent at that time? She was, she was pretty angry. It goes on to state that Officer Borisadi and I attempted to give the suspect another warning that she would be arrested if she did not leave the property. Did you or Officer Borisadi give Ms. Martinez that warning? I don't remember who specifically did. It says the suspect maintained her disorderly and belligerent behavior as she refused to leave the premise. Um, Disorderly and belligerent behavior. Can you describe what she was doing that was disorderly and belligerent? It'd be yelling. Be yelling, yelling and screaming, yeah. Okay. And that was after she was told that she was being under arrest? Or when she was told that she was trespassed. Okay. But prior to her being told that she was trespassed, she was not disorderly or belligerent that you witnessed? I mean, yeah, she was angry, but not towards us. Okay. Was she, was she acting, okay. Well, she was angry, uh, emotionally angry. Was she acting any sort of physical anger? Was she hitting things, throwing things, punching things? No. The arrest report goes on to state that it should be noted that the suspect was intoxicated to the point where she could not make a rational decision and could have harmed herself, others, or property. Is it your belief that Ms. Martinez could not make a rational decision on that day? She was fairly intoxicated. Was she intoxicated to the point that she forgot that her purse and her phone were still in the place that she had just left? Apparently not. Would that be a rational decision <laughs> to, to get her thing before she left the yeah, parking lot? Could be. Okay. Goes on to state that Officer Borisadi and I inf uh, informed the suspect that she was being arrested and attempted to place her hands behind her back for detainment. Uh, I think this is slightly different from what we testified earlier. I believe you said that Officer Borisadi was the one who grabbed her wrist to, tr to effectuate the arrest uh, to begin with. He, he initiated it. Okay. The, he was the first one to grab a hold of her. And how long after did you um, grab a hold of her? Very quickly, almost immediately. Okay. The sus then it goes on to say the suspect began to resist by bracing her arms, pulling away, and swinging her arms without regard to myself and Officer Borisadi. Do you do you remember her swinging her arms like that? Or, or was her? Or did Officer Borisadi have her right hand and you have her left hand at that point? She was squirming, so yeah. I mean, she was squirming, pulling, swinging. Um, you you remember her swinging? Yeah, it was part of the squirming, and yeah, it's part of the squirming and pulling away and everything. Yeah. Okay. But when you say swinging, you don't. No, strike that. Then goes on to say that Officer Borisadi and I took the suspect to the ground, at which point she began kicking at us and biting at Officer Borisadi. You did not witness her bite at Officer Borisadi, did you? No. It says the suspect was struck on her lower back by Officer Borisadi until she complied uh, with the loud verbal commands to stop resisting. Do you recall the strikes to her lower back? Yeah, I remember strikes to the back. And what about strikes to the side? Yeah. But that doesn't say side in here, Does, right? Is that correct? There's no mention of strikes okay. to her side in this arrest and booking report, is that correct? Certainly. Yeah, that's correct. There's no mention of it. And 
and the, well, Officer Borisati and I were able to place handcuffs on the suspect while she was on the ground. Uh, as we walked the suspect to my patrol vehicle, she began to kick at Officer Borisati and I with her legs. Um, is there any mention about Officer Borisati making contact with Ms. Martinez's head or putting it into the pavement in no. this report? And this report, again, was authored by Officer Borisati, or the narrative report was authored by Officer Borisati. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. But you reviewed this? Yes. Okay. And you are the arresting officer. Is that correct? He's also listed on there as the second arresting officer. Okay. Yes, does it, the primary. Does it matter for the purposes, for any purpose, who's primary and who's secondary? What is the significance between the two? Um... So just be that was done on my report under my name. The second officer gives him the option to sign the arrest docket at the jail. It's for her to be admitted into the jail. Okay. I hand this back to you. Do okay. you see, there's a there's a series of signatures there in the middle of the page. Uh, yes. Is your signature affixed to this report? No. Is that is that common? Yeah. Very. Okay. Whose signatures are on that report? Uh, appears to be Officer Borsade's. Okay. Very good. Okay. And why was it that you're, you did not sign this report in this instance? Because he was the one that stayed behind uh, with her at the uh, jail while I went to my deployment. Again, I think we touched on this earlier, but at some point, was there ever a discussion about between you and Officer Borisati where Borisati may have uh, said, I'll, I'll, why don't I just be primary on this? I'll do the report. I'll do it all. No, there was never a discussion about him being, um, being the sole writer of it. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, it, it seems to me, uh, I'm just trying to figure out why officer why why the narrative for section of the report isn't just written from Officer Borisati's perspective. Section. Yeah, I couldn't tell you why he decided to do it that way. Because it would make it seem like those are your statements. Mm -hmm. um, I I think there are some statements in here that you yourself may not have witnessed. Is that Section is that fair? Uh, which statements will those be again? So I can accurately answer that question. Certainly. Um, Officer Borisati and I took the suspect to the ground, at which point she began kicking at us and biting at Officer Borisati. He discussed the biting at the parking lot. He discussed that she attempted to bite him at the parking lot. But I did not witness it. Okay. Does it's, but you see where that could get confusing. It, I understand if it says at the Sally Port, Officer Borisati told me that she bit him at it was That's at not the objection. Right? But it was at the parking lot that he advised me after the incident. After we got her detained and put in the car, he advised me that she attempted to bite him. Okay. But you did not witness it itself. That's correct. I did not witness it. All right. Let me look at the. Uh, the we have the R and R. Oh yeah. On for one more bathroom break. Yeah, sure. Let's, 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 yeah, going sure. through water over here. This is media number two. We're on the record at twelve forty-four. All right. I believe we had just gotten to the uh, response to resistance report. I was just about to ask you some more questions about that. What I'd like to do is just go through it with you, and if I've got some questions, I may ask them along the way. Does that sound fair? Sounds good. Okay. Very good. Now, this is the res response to resistance witness report. Uh, I believe the date was April 29th, 2016, about 3.35 a.m. That That's what it says on there, yes, sir. All right. Uh, it says in the narrative portion here, now you did fill out this Form, correct. That's correct. This, this narrative portion uh, on the response to resistant report was filled out by you. It was written by me. Correct. I'm going to give him a copy. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. I should have made copies. All right. Following along here in the narrative sections, it says, on April 27, 2016, at 1653, Officer A.A. A. Borisati, number 72073, and I were dispatched to 4923 University Boulevard West Sports Gentlemen Club in reference to a dispute involving an intoxicated ex-employee disrupting the business and refusing to leave. Okay, Officer Borisati arrived at the scene. Upon my arrival, I observed Myra Martinez, a suspect, and Officer Borisati in front of the business uh, near the entrance. So when you arrived and you saw, I believe you, you, you testified that you saw Officer Borisati's patrol vehicle in the parking lot, and then you saw Miss Martinez sitting on the curb outside. Yes, do you recall seeing Officer Borisati standing by Ms. Martinez at that time, or was Officer Borisati inside of the establishment at no, that time? No, he was inside the establishment. Okay. <clears throat> the suspect appeared to be intoxicated and was belligerent towards Officer Borisati and myself when we tried to talk to her. Um, when you first tried to talk to her, was she belligerent um, at that point? Not at first. Okay. It goes on to say that although it was difficult to understand what she was saying, it was determined that she understood she was not welcome at the business but refused to leave because she left a purse in the business. Um, what do you mean by it was difficult to understand what she was saying? Well, she was intoxicated for one, and then also she was, um, uh, she'd ramble on about things, about being fired on her first day, not being able to go on stage, just kind of rambling things. So. Okay. But was there, did you notice, could you not understand the words that she was saying, or was it, uh, she wasn't, it was difficult to follow her, her line of thought? It was difficult to follow, and then with her slurred speech, her level of intoxication, yeah, it was difficult to uh, understand as well. Uh, Officer Borisati met with the staff and to see if she had any property in the business. I stayed with the suspect who sat on the curb and ranted about being fired on her first day as a dancer because she came to work drunk. Now when it says when she came to work drunk, at this point, at the time that you did this report two days after the arrest, do you, were you aware whether or not she, was, she came to work drunk? No, that's just what she was ranting about. That she came to work drunk? That's the corner of this, yes, sir. Okay. It goes on to say, I tried to calm her down, but she grew more furious as we waited. Was Officer Borisati also trying to calm her down at this point? It just says I. I couldn't remember if he was there at that time or not. Okay. A few minutes later, Officer Borisati returned and gave the suspect her purse. Officer Borisati then advised the suspect that the staff wanted her warned against trespassing at the business. Uh, it was explained that she would not that she would be subject to arrest if she did not immediately leave the business or property. When you say it was explained that she would be subject to arrest uh, if she did not immediately leave the business property, how was that explained to her? Uh, that you have been that the business wants you trespassed and you were to leave the property. think that she understood what you were telling her? Yeah. Okay. So from your position, she was, she was a capable of, of understanding the demands? I think so, yeah. The suspect tried to argue about the trespass warning and continued contesting her termination for being intoxicated. Uh, when you say contesting her termination for being intoxicated, does that mean that she was complaining about that to you? Yeah, she's she was complaining about being fired, yeah. Okay, but she not not in front of, uh, not a, to the scores management, but to you. Is that correct? Yeah, she was complaining about being fired to me. Okay. I tried to convince the suspect to leave peaceably, but she continued to argue. Um, how did you try to convince Miss Martinez to leave peaceably? Just talking to her calmly and then telling her that if she didn't leave, she would go to jail. I think we, we touched on this earlier, but what, what were her options uh, as far as peaceably leaving? Objection of form. To leave the property. Like I said, she had, we were advised that she had a ride on the way, but she was still uh, told to leave the property. 
the business property. Okay. But at the same time, she was also uh, intoxicated? Yes. Is that, would that be common in a, in a trespass situation if somebody was intoxicated to just say, go to somebody else's property? Um, that will solve the issue? Is that, is that common? Uh, well, I mean, where are you getting at? Because we didn't have the option to just, if you're talking about just leaving her somewhere, then no, we never got to that point. But yeah, it is, it, they, when they're trespassed, yes, they need to leave the business property that's trespassing them. Okay. Even, okay. I guess my question is, is, is where, where did you expect her to, to go? Objection to form. I didn't give her a specific location. But you did, you did know that she had a ride on the way? Jackson form. Did you know that she had a ride on the way? Jackson form. I was made aware that she had a ride on the way. I was advised that she had a ride on the way. Okay. When instructed to leave the property immediately, she flatly refused. At, at this point, were you, uh, had Officer Borsati returned her items to her at this point? All of her items. Yeah, it says a few lines over uh, above that Officer Borshadi returned and gave the suspect her purse. Okay. It says, at this point, Officer Borsadi took hold of her right arm and told the suspect that she was under arrest for trespassing. So uh, it was Officer Borsadi who, who actually made, according to this report, it was Officer Borsadi who told Ms. Martinez that she was under arrest. Is that correct? That just, well, that's saying that he made contact with her, yes, and then advised that she was under arrest. Did, okay. The suspect became enraged, said, don't you effing touch me, and tried to pull her arm away from Officer Borsati. Uh, I took hold of her left arm to quickly handcuff her before she could further resist and instructed her to calm down and put her hands behind her back. Um, she refused to comply and continued to resist by pulling her arms away from us while she tried to kick me. She was furiously yelling. Uh, she did not do anything wrong and ignored all my instructions to stop resisting. Um, how many instructions uh, to stop resisting do you recall giving Ms. Martinez? Like I said, my normal command is uh, calm down, put your hands behind your back, that sort of thing. Okay. So I don't know how many times I repeated that. Do you ever recall saying the phrase, stop resisting? I don't specifically recall now, no. Okay. Are you, as a police officer, are you trained when you give verbal commands to make certain statements? Uh, the common one is stop resisting, but they don't give us a, a set verbiage to use now. Is there a difference between calm down and stop resisting? Yeah. After a struggle, I was able to get her left arm behind her back and into a handcuff. So that was you who put the handcuff on her left arm, correct? Correct. Officer Borsati was unable to get the suspect's right arm behind her back. Without explaining his intent to me, he then let go of her arm and grabbed the suspect's waist. Um, is this when Officer Borsati is beginning to attempt the takedown maneuver or take her down to the ground? Yeah, this would be the start of that. Okay. Is it common... Um, in a situation like this where there are two officers and one suspect for there to be communications between the officer as to what one officer intended to do or not? Ideally, yes, but during a situation sometimes it's more difficult than you'd imagine. I understand that. It says he then took the suspect to the ground. During the takedown, I lost control of her left arm, which was handcuffed. When she hit the ground, she immediately tried rolling around and pulling her arms away. Um, do you recall her rolling around on the ground? Yeah. What do you mean by rolling? Do you mean like full rollovers, or mm. was she just squirming back and forth? Squirming from side to side, maybe on her back, on her side, that kind of deal. Okay. But not rolling like I, she would down a hill. So. No, I don't remember specific, like, yeah, like a roll kind of deal. Okay. She was trying to, get to, trying to get her feet underneath her to stand up as Officer Borisati tried to gain control of her right side. I regained control of her left arm, which had an open handcuff attached. Okay. Is 
so she was trying to get to her feet um, at the time, so it, presumably she's still at the ground at, uh, during this point? Yeah, when she sure. went to the ground, she stayed on the ground. Okay. And she was on the ground at the time that you regained control of her left arm? Correct. Okay. And I think that you had made some mention earlier about how... Well, let me ask you, at, at the point that you regained control of her left arm, was it possible for her to swing her left arm around um, with an open handcuff on it? By the time I got control of it, she was, I'd never lost control of it. So okay. no, she wouldn't have been able to swing that arm around. Okay. It says the handcuff gave the suspect a potentially deadly weapon and needed to be controlled before it could be used. Um, I held that arm with my right hand and attempted to contact HQ via radio for more assistance with my left. Uh, at that point in time, uh, was the handcuff, it says the handcuff gave the suspect a potentially deadly weapon. Is a, is a handcuff that's uh, you're in control of a deadly weapon? I believe that was, that statement was made though uh, prior to me gaining control of it. If I remember right, it says it's. I'll just read the whole thing. It says I regained control of her left arm, which had an open handcuff still attached. The handcuff gave the suspect a potentially deadly weapon and needed to be controlled before it could be used. Which is why I gained control of it so quickly, or attempted to gain control of it so quickly. So yeah. Okay. So, but once you gain control of it, it's no longer a deadly weapon. Is that fair? Yeah. If I have full control of it, no, she couldn't use it to be a deadly weapon at that point. Thank you. It says, Officer Borsati was still struggling to overcome the suspect's <coughs> resistance and punched her right shoulder mass, right arm, and right side of her head with his hands. Um, I believe you testified earlier that there was maybe eight strikes um, to the back and to her side. Are these the strikes that we're talking about here? Yes. The strikes to her right shoulder mass, her right arm, and the right side of her head? Yes. And this report was on April 29th, two days later. Yeah, day, day and a half later. Thank you. After Officer Borisati got the suspect's right arm behind her back, I was able to complete handcuffing the suspect and walk her to my patrol vehicle. While walking the suspect to the vehicle, she violently kicked me on my right thigh and repeatedly tried to pull away. This, this kick... Uh, how many times did Miss Martinez kick you um, once she was handcuffed? The one I remember was the one. Just that one time? It's the one I specifically remember, yeah. Okay. And that occurred after Officer uh, Borisati had uh, struck her? Yes, yeah, so it was after she was handcuffed. Once the suspect was placed into my vehicle, she began kicking the windows and doors. Uh, when other units arrived to assist, the suspect was hobbled in an effort to stop her from kicking. After that, I reported the suspect to the pretrial detention facility. She screamed profanities and threats at me during the entirety of the transport. I completed my report and left the suspect with Officer Borisati so I could make it to a robbery, robbery deployment that I was assigned. After transporting the suspect to pretrial detention facility, I notified Sergeant J.A. Weeks, number 6777, about the incident. Now, I think we talked about your telephone call with Sergeant Weeks a little bit earlier, but yes. um, that's you, you were notifying him. This is a call where you were notifying him about the uh, use of force involved? That's correct. And um, that was based on you witnessing the number of strikes uh, that Officer Borisati just used, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you originally contacted Officer Weeks on the same date of the incident, which would have been April 27th, 2016? Yes, sir. Okay. 27th. Um, 
it says, uh, I was advised the, that Integrity was conducting an investigation and to wait until further notice before transmitting any reports regarding the incident. Um, that's what Sergeant Weeks told you about the Integrity unit? To wait, to transmit, yes, sir. Okay. And then on uh, 428, which was the day following this incident, it says, I was advised by Sergeant Weeks to complete this report. Yes. So to be clear, you called Sergeant Weeks on April 27th, 2016, about this use of force. Uh, he says, um, what, does he, what does he say generally? What is your understanding of what Sergeant Weeks was saying in uh, response to you? Generally, don't transmit any more reports. Okay. Okay. And then the following day, he calls you and says, Right, Actually, this, I need you to do a report. Right, this witness RTR. Yes. Okay. So has he changed his mind? I don't... You have to ask him. I don't know if he changed his mind or if he was instructed to tell me. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Either way, your instructions changed yes. from the 27th to the 28th. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. I want to ask you a little bit about uh, integrity, the integrity investigation. Are you aware that the integrity investigation, well, I guess you were, Sergeant Weeks told you that integrity had this? Yes, sir. Um, is that the first time you were notified that integrity was going to be reviewing this incident? I believe so. Okay. Um, were you contacted by anybody in integrity about this? Uh, yes, eventually a few days after, a couple days after maybe. A couple days after the incident? Incident, yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember who contacted you? Uh, Detective Cayenne. Okay. And uh, what did Detective Cayenne and, and you discuss? Was that uh, well, when was the original contact? Call? Yes. The, the, uh, the original contact was a telephone call. And uh, what did you guys discuss during this telephone call? He just asked if I would uh, be willing to come in. Um, to talk about the incident. At this point, uh, when he asked you to come in and talk about the incident, did he specifically reference the incident that occurred in the Scores parking lot, or would he, was he referencing what happened in the Sally Port, or did he differentiate between the two? I don't think he specified. Okay. What was your, well, did you schedule a time to go meet with the yes. detective? And when did you meet with Detective Cayenne? I, I couldn't give you a date. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, actually, I've, I've, I've got the, I think it was recorded um, at the time, and I believe you said that you reviewed the recording of it before this, before this event, before this deposition. I'd like to just play some of it uh, as we go. Kind of like we just did with these reports, and I'm sure I'll have some questions along the way that I may stop and ask you about, okay? Okay. okay. All right. Do you want me to write this? Um, or just put video playing, or how do you want me to do that? I'd like you to write it, okay. actually, yeah. Oh. Thank you. I'm sorry. And I can get you a copy of this video. Okay. All right. Say, hey, you know, they asked me to keep it confidential, and if 
they need to know, then they can call us. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Let me just, was this your first time meeting with Integrity? Yes, sir. In any capacity? Yes, sir. Um, never met with Integrity when you were a CSO uh, or a um, corrections officer? No. Okay, thank you. You probably feel a little bit apprehensive or nervous because I don't know. Have you ever been in this position? I have not, no, sir. Okay, and how long have you been on? Um, a total of nine years as a police officer since August. Okay, so. okay, very good. So uh, I'm going to ask you some tough questions, okay? But it is what it is. If things happen. Uh, both you and Officer Morisotti came out of it alive, yes. uh, as well as Ms. Martinez. So, you know, what we just need to do is just get a solid investigation and get your, your version of the yes. So, all right, I appreciate your coming. Thanks so much. I might be documenting some things on paper and stuff like that. It's just Absolutely. To, to keep notes during this uh, your event. But, uh, uh, Zone three, and what is what? What is Watch Five? Uh, so the city is broken up into six zones for patrol. Uh, zone three would be um, one of those zones. So it basically encompasses everything uh, south of the St. Johns River, um, down towards the Buckman. If that makes sense. Um, either further south to the St. Johns County line, and then um, basics it rides up Beach Boulevard to the beaches jurisdiction. Okay, so out east. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And watch five? Uh, there's six different watches. Watch five are the hours of 3.30 p.m. to 2.55 a.m. Okay, so that's a shift. That's right. a shift, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Zone is a physical location? Correct, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's also more side of your... He rides off too as well, yes, sir. Okay, so you guys get dispatched. Tell me how it happened in, you know, from you getting to the park or not. To handle the call. Well, by the time I arrived, um, he was already at the scene. What did you get dispatched to? A uh, dispute uh, with the intoxicated individual. I don't know. Codes are fine. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. 263. Okay. Uh, so we got dispatched to that. Um, by the time I arrived, he was already on scene, uh, and he was um, exiting the establishment. Okay. Um, he was talking to the complainant in the establishment. Do you remember who the complainant was? I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Off the top of my head, he was the, I believe he was the acting manager that night. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember his name, to be honest with you. But you didn't have I did not interact with him at all. I, don't, I didn't even see him. I didn't even see him. He stayed inside. Um, so, um, we began talking to Ms. Martinez. Um, she, her, her original complaint was that um, she left her purse inside and she wanted her items from the you know, from inside the store, or the uh, establishment. So, uh, Officer Morisotti went back in and um, uh, was able to retrieve the purse and came back out. Uh, but um, the complainant and advised Officer Morisotti that uh, he wanted her trespass. 
So, um, the advisor that she was with us, um, she was pretty belligerent, pretty aggravated okay. at the time, but clearly intoxicated. Um, and um, so, we, you know, advised her that if she was to return, that she would be subject to arrest. You said that we advised her that if she were to return, she would be subject to arrest. Mm -hmm. um, who is the we in that? Is that both you and Officer Borisati remember saying that to her? Yeah, so we were the only two at the scene, so we would have been Officer Borisati and I. Okay, but which one actually, do, do you recall saying those words to Miss Martinez, or do you remember hearing Officer Borisati say those words? Section of uh, no, I I said them, but it doesn't mean that he didn't say them along the conversation, you know, as the conversation went on as well. Okay. Um, and we asked her to leave the property, and she continued to say, um, uh, continued to be upset, belligerent, you know, uh, really about not even being able to go on stage yet. It was kind of one of the things she kept repeating, I didn't go on stage yet. So, do you um, think she was understanding what you guys were telling her? Was she caught camera around us? She was definitely coherent, yes, sir. I mean, she was intoxicated, yes, sir, but she was, she was coherent. Um, and she knew that she was being trespassed because she... So, so I just want to stop it there. Um, <clears throat> so from your perspective, she was, she was coherent. Coherent enough to understand that she was trespassed. Understand? I'm sorry. She did. That's not correct. She. Um, I guess she wasn't. She didn't agree that she for that she was going to be trespassed. Okay. She just didn't agree with it. She's like, I just came to my first day at work and they fired me. Um, so we um, uh, we gave her several opportunities to leave. To leave you know, to move the, to go up the property and. Um, they won't shut the property immediately, so we need you to exit immediately. And she continue. When you say we gave her plenty of opportunities to leave the property, what opportunities did you give her to leave the property? Telling her that she needs to leave, and I mean, she has an opportunity to walk, start walking, start exiting the property. Okay. At the, at the same time, she's intoxicated. Correct. correct? Is it is it common for would it be common to have an intoxicated person just leave the business? Just leave. Is that is that standard procedure? If somebody's intoxicated, are they just supposed to walk walk off? Well, like I told you, they. I mean, she has to leave the property. She's trespassed. But if you're I don't know where you're getting at with that. See, she, if she's trespassed, she's got to leave the property. Yes. I'm, what I'm getting at is you said you gave her multiple opportunities to leave. I'm asking you what opportunity, what are those opportunities? Protection of form. She is in public. She can walk away. Even though she's intoxicated? Yes. Can you be intoxicated in public? Without disturbing somebody's peace? Doesn't mean that we're going to leave her alone. Did you say that you were going to stay with her? I didn't say that specifically to her, no. Could she have been arrested for being intoxicated in public had she walked away? Like I said, we didn't get to that point and we wouldn't have, we never made the decision on if we were going to, how we we're going to stay with her and how we we're going to wait for that ride. Right. Yeah, I understand you made the decision to ultimately arrest yeah. her, but I'm asking you specifically, you said you provided her opportunities to leave. Mm -hmm. What are those opportunities? Objection to form. Like I told you, she has the opportunity to walk away, walk off the property. Okay. So had Miss Martinez just walked away while, while intoxicated from the property, um, then she would have just went on her way and she would not have been arrested. Is that what you're saying? Objection. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, going to the opportunity, you never told, you never advised her that you would stay with her until her ride got there? I don't remember ever specifically saying that to her now. Okay. She almost started to unpack things from her person bag 
just in an effort to, you know, stall or, you know, just be, just refuse. Um, so at that time I told Officer Bullish on me, I said, you know, let's go ahead and go 1015, she's not leaving. Let's go ahead and push her under arrest. So he said, okay. So he uh, walked over and, and told her, he said, ma'am, you know, you're not leaving, but you're going to jail now. I need you to stand up and push her and find your back you're under arrest. And that's when, um, that's when she said, don't you fucking touch me. And so Talk to she, him. talking to him, I'm kind of sure Um She was still kind of on her, I don't know if it was on her knees, but she was bent down. Okay. Like maybe a squat or something, on her knees near her items. So he reached out and grabbed her right arm and, you know, just wanted to go pick her up and, and she began to pull away the game. And so that's why I intervened. I came and grabbed her left. Uh, I'm pausing there for a second. Um, again, going back, at this point, uh, while Miss Martinez, she was intoxicated at scores, I believe. Well, was she a threat to herself or others or to property at that time? Not at that moment. <laughs> Prior to her, her arrest, was she a threat to herself or to others or to property? Nothing that we were advised specifically, no. Nothing specifically advised. Um, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 2 here. Um, if you could just read the last paragraph there uh, going on here and then on to the next page, please. The very last, you're talking about where there it says the suspect? Is that what you're talking about? So get that right. Sure. Okay. Yes. I know mean, that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yes, that'd be great. Suspect maintained her disorderly and belligerent behavior and she refused to leave the premises. It should be noted that the suspect was intoxicated at the point where she could not make a rational decision and could have harmed herself, others, or property. Thank you. So uh, my question to you, Officer Vickery, is that if someone is a threat to cause harm to herself, to others, or to property, how is she supposed to just walk away? And, and she's intoxicated. I said could have. So she, she was intoxicated to the point where she could have become that way. Okay, so she was not that way is what... Uh, yes, yeah, she was not that way, but she had that potential of becoming that way. She could have. All right, I'm going to read from it. It said, it should be noted that the suspect was intoxicated to the point where she could not make a rational decision and could not and could have harmed herself, others, or property. So she was intoxicated to the point where she could not make a rational decision, according to the arrest report. Officer, if somebody is intoxicated to the point that they cannot make a rational decision, are they supposed to just leave the property then? Objection. I think you're referring to us leaving her alone and... Like I told you, we never got to that point. So, it, it, would we have waited for a ride? We never got to that point, but most likely, yeah. Okay. Um, again, in, in, the, in your statement that you that you made with uh, integrity, you said you provided multiple opportunities. I understand that you may not have. Uh, I know that you ultimately arrested her. I guess mm -hmm. my question I'm asking you specifically is about those uh, opportunities to leave. Yes, we had told her to leave, and she refused to. Okay. Is, is an intoxicated person who may be, uh, well, I'm sorry, is intoxicated to the point where they cannot make a rational decision, are they just, should just, should just leave then? According, that's the opportunity that you're talking about. I'm trying to be very specific as to what opportunity you provided her to leave. Objection to form. So, so... Again, if the suspect is intoxicated to the point where they could not make a rational decision and you tell them to leave the property, um, are they free to leave the property even though they are intoxicated and even though they are incapable of making a rational decision? They were told to leave. They were told to leave the property, yes. She was told to leave the property. Uh, like we talked earlier, she was able to make a rational enough decision to get her purse and, and ID out of her, out of the... Um, business before she left so and it was stated in there also that she understood that she was trespassed so yes she had the knowledge she was trespassing had the knowledge that she was supposed to leave so is it your testimony here today that she did she could make a rational decision objection form <clears throat> It 
some rational decisions, yes, I think she was capable of making. Okay. So with the police report, would the arrest and booking report be inaccurate when it says that the suspect was intoxicated to the point where she could not make a rational decision? Yeah, some rational decisions she could make, so I guess I could say that's not 100% accurate. this point had not mentioned the swinging of the handcuff in any direction that was detective cayenne who who first mentions her swinging the handcuff is that correct Chapter four. he was the one on there that on that video you're he talking about yeah he was the one on there that um initiated the swing of the handcuffs okay. i didn't say it prior to that in that interview okay did you say it in any other reports that you may have written prior to giving this interview i don't believe it's in any other reports okay Intentionally, I, I don't know, but it could have. I mean, it could have been if, if, one, somebody right, if the handcuff had struck one of you guys in the face, face, she wasn't compliant with right. the instructions. She was belligerent. She was intoxicated. Right. Um, Detective Cayenne says she wasn't following any instructions. Um, what instructions is he talking about? Calm down. Put your hands behind your back. Okay. Um, I would imagine. Sure. Yeah. And what about anything that Officer Borisati says? I can't. You said you couldn't remember anything that Officer Ooh. Borisati said? Yeah, like I said, I couldn't remember any specifics that he was saying. Okay. Do you recall if he was saying anything? Like I said, I, I couldn't. Okay. She would, not, she would not submit to the request for, you know, stop resisting or, or, or calm down, in your words, to be handcuffed. So she's swinging around her left cuff. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So, um, so. Detective Cayenne says, so she's swinging around her left cuff. Go ahead. At, at this point, did you did you tell Detective Cayenne that she was swinging around her left cuff? I don't remember being there saying that to him. Okay. Well, have you ever told Detective Cayenne that Miss Martinez was swinging around her left cuff? Um, don't think I ever told him that okay. specifically. The, she went to the ground. Um, uh, Officer Borshade was finally able to get her on her stomach. I think she was she was kind of rolling back and forth. She was kind of rolling back and forth. Um, he was able to get her on her stomach, and I was able to grab the left arm and get uh, that hand secure. Uh, I was able to, you know, kind of with my right knee, just be able to put it in her um, back, uh, just to kind of help secure her to the ground, so that way I could get. I was holding the the arm and cuff my right hand so she couldn't use that and I was able to get that secure and I was using my left arm to call a tip to call now I didn't go through I tried two separate times no problem and for whatever reason just wasn't able to go through absolutely um so I was tipped to the you know about 33 floors so we'll find one um so that way people would come um I noticed um uh, strikes from all four side uh, I noticed mainly in the back and side um and it's tough strikes the way he was doing the strike, she wasn't cuffed yet. She was not cuffed yet, yes, sir. So you said that you noticed uh, strikes to the back and the side. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay. Um, 
anywhere on the is anywhere uh, I'm going to show you what's been marked as plaintiff's exhibit 2 again this is the arrest and booking report does it say anything about being punched in the side yeah, I think we already talked about that. It, we, it does not. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, she still uh, had her right arm um, either underneath her, kind of to the side, and was still really resisting. Fair enough. Um, I wasn't really giving commands at this time because I was more focused on trying to get transmission through so we could get some backup. Gotcha. Um, so um, he continued to strike. He struck, um, struck multiple times. Um, and. Uh, was able to get was able to get her arm behind her back, um, and um, and then I was able to handcuff. Um, and I yeah we got her detained at that point. Um, he stood up and I just kind of I just kind of you know took a breather. Okay. I stayed with my knee kind of on her, secure her. She once she was handcuffed she you know legs kicked a little bit but she kind of. I, you know, I don't know if it was just exhaustion from her at that point for a minute or what, but she stopped and calmed for, for a second, and um, I just kind of took a deep breath just to kind of, you know, um, um, get some air in me and extra breath. So um, I was able to pick her up off the ground um, and um, attempted to start escorting her to the vehicle, and that's when she reared back and kind of mule kicked um, my thigh in the area, right inside, I believe it was. Contact? Uh, I, I didn't notice it at the time. Right, I said she kicked at me. Yes, right. sir. Um, I do know she. I do remember her kicking and me, kind of trying to move. I honestly don't ever remember getting hit by anything, okay. just because the adrenaline was going. I got you. So she was really kicking, kicking. Um, but I do know, I'm, you know, I kind of moved, so she must have connected with something. So um, um, we um, started transport her. You know, I kind of push her arms up in the air. So that way I kind of get her bent and right. moving forward and was able to place her on the vehicle. What vehicle? My vehicle. Okay. And you're the primary officer? I right? am the primary officer. Okay, so was it a struggle to get her in your vehicle? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. She, um, she's not in the vehicle fine. Um, she was, you know, she started to become more more belligerent, you know, for the time she gave up, got up and uh, started kicking. Um, she continued to be more and more belligerent yelling and screaming and, um, but I don't remember really struggling to put her inside the vehicle at all. Okay. Um, Once you guys get her in the vehicle and you get secured in the vehicle, was the determination to stay there and do paperwork or head out to the paperwork? We really didn't have much time because she immediately started kicking. Okay. Um, it wasn't seconds of her being in the uh, vehicle before she immediately started kicking windows and doors. Okay. Uh, it was um, the passenger side. So, um, I was heading across from my head. Okay. So, she's starting to kick. Starting to kick. Uh, Officer Borsai gets on the radio um, and calls his supervisor at the time um, and says, um, you know, something about we might need a tar one or we're about a tar one. Is that Garriott who's calling? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, so, um, we get another officer there. One officer shows up. And we get Officer Porter Shade's tar, or, uh, you know, tar out. And um, we hobble and we just put the machine on her feet so that way she won't kick. Okay, so it was actually Officer Porter Shade's hobble or yours? It was his. It was his? It was, it was his. It was his, yes. Okay. Sir. And then who did the hobble? Um, officer Porter Shade and the other officer that was there. Do you recall that may have been? I, I'm so so new. I want to say I want to say his last name is Brown. Okay. I don't. I can. I can recognize him. I'm trying to think of his last name. Not a problem. It's Brown. And then at that time, um, the other officer had shown up as well. The other supervisor had shown up. So, Orsani gets his hobble. Orsani and the other officer who figured out who that is. They they hobble her. Well, to the rear passenger door, rear driver's the driver door. That's what okay, so the rear was. Rear driver's door. Um, and you said also, Borsadi applied the hobble to her feet. 
So you guys get it, you know, I'm secure. I guess I'm guessing dropping it out of the car. Yes, sir. Closing the door. Um, she's still in your vehicle. We, we actually ran through um, the out of the rear passenger or rear driver door, driver side door, and then into my driver door. So I just I just sit and hold. Yep. Policy procedures. So far, that's, that's fantastic. What about um? Did a supervisor ever show up at the scene? The, the PIC did. The uh, I would have been Garriott. Okay. So and who's your sergeant? Uh, Sergeant Weeks. Okay. Sergeant Weeks. So Joe Weeks is your supervisor, and they had a PIC, which was carried. So yes, he does show up at the scene? Yes, sir. Okay, so after she's hobbled, how long do you guys think you remain there prior to transporting? Oh, man. Um, Ten, maybe, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, I hate to give a timeline. No, I got to get this wrong. So, yeah, it's okay. I guess, let, let me ask you a question. It's probably enough for everybody to catch their breath. Yes, sir. And, 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 and settle down for a second. I guess for either you or, or Saudi to inform the PIC of what you actually had. Yes, sir. While you were 1015, I'm guessing. Correct. And that you had to hobble. What is 1015? Uh, arrest. Yeah, when you uh, take someone into custody. Thank you. Yes, sir. Right. Was fire rescue called for anyone at the scene? No, sir. Okay. She actually, um, um, she actually, she didn't have any physical injuries on her, and okay. she actually uh, told us because we asked her, you know, are you hurt? She said no. Okay. She literally, she said no. I had no injuries. I'm not hurt. So. Okay. So you guys decide. Do you do you specifically remember her saying, "I have no injuries"? Now I don't specifically remember that. Okay. But to 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 head down to the jail. I'm guessing you're driving, I am her, driving. and I guess Borsani followed you. Correct. So the 35. You guys get to the jail. Um, what route did you take 95 North? Yes, sir. I jumped on Phillips and took Phillips and then jumped on 95. All the way to the end of Phillips and jumped on 95. Gotcha. You guys get to the jail. Um, what do you notice when you get to the jail? Like, how, how crowded was it, and what time did you arrive there, you think? Oh, man. Right there, about 30 maybe. Okay. Something like that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure. And what was the crowd like? like uh, cars, it right? was it was a decent crowd. There might have been three or four people waiting to get in. Okay. Uh, and, uh, suspects made to this point here waiting to get in. Uh, I was able to park um, pretty much in front of the uh, intake door. Okay. Um, but um, but there were multiple cars. Of course, I had to park up front towards the exit. Okay, and I guess so. When you get to the jail, you guys go inside before you start completing the arrest report. No, sir. We had we had started on the arrest report then actually. Where at? Uh, in the salad port. Okay. In the salad port. Right. Sorry. So. Oh, that's what you mean. I'm yes, sorry. We're yeah. in the salad port before. Okay, started. correct. So um, you guys are in the salad port, and then that's when you. When you're in the Sally Port and you're talking, uh, you and Officer Borisati are, are dividing up how you're going to do the uh, arrest and booking report. Are you guys in the are you still in your own vehicles? Are you guys talking over the radio? Or you, have you guys gotten out of your cars and talking in person? Do you recall? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember how that conversation. If it was in person, if it was over the computer. Okay. Um, do you recall, well, do you remember getting out of your vehicle uh, and talking to Officer Borisati within the Sally Port? I mean, at some point I would have to, but I don't remember the specifics of it. Yeah. Okay. And it was, I think you said this earlier, but it was Officer Borisati who had volunteered to do the narrative report? Yeah, and I, as you say that too, I, I believe he actually sends that through um, our dispatch system, if I remember right, the volunteer to do the um, narrative Okay. If I remember correctly. Okay. Is that... Would that be on this sheet in any way? I think it's in this interview. Okay. No, it wouldn't be on... Um, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, it goes It goes for a couple of pages here. Um, I'll let you take a, take a look at those and see if anything jogs your memory.
No, I think this is just people, this would be the dispatch screen, like people responded on that same system. Um, we can send messages and stuff too. I don't think it was on this though. Okay. So it would be a different system? No, same system. Same system, but you can send messages? Correct. Okay. Um, do you know what that system is called? How would, how would we try to track, the, track down any of that? MDC. MDC? Uh, yeah, um, Mobile Dispatch Center, I think. Okay. And that allows officers to communicate with each other via email or whatever from their patrol cars? Is that what that is? Yeah, it's not email, but yeah, it's a messaging system. Messaging system, yes, thank you. Okay. Sorry, let me ask you this one last thing. Um, did you and Officer Borisati discuss the division of labor as far as the arrest and booking report is concerned at scores, or did you do that at the Sally Port? It would have been at the Sally Port. Okay. Yeah. The arrest document. Right. Let me ask you a question, and just to clear some things up. The arrest report. You did the arrest report. Who did the narrative? The Officer Borisati did. It. Okay. Yes, sir. And I guess. Tell me the reason why he did the narrative. I think we're just thinking because she was hobbled and uh, just to in a, a way to expedite the process. Um, we, he said, um, he might actually send it through NBC. Would you like me to do the narrative? And I said, that'd be perfect. I'll start on the blocks and we'll knock that out. Okay. And then we did review the narrative together. Okay, it's not a problem. So you're doing a docket, you're checking in all the biographical stuff for her. He's doing a narrative. I guess at some point he sent you the narrative. You guys review it. You submitted. Um, who was the approving supervisor? What side? Of uh, because of it. So. Okay. And the, so the entire time, was she in the car? Did you guys let her out? She was in the car the entire time. Okay. Did you guys were completing the dock? Yes, sir. That sounds good. So, docket's approved now, and she's about to exit. What side of the vehicle did she exit on? The driver. When it says the docket is approved and she's about to exit, it, what is she, what is, uh, there, what are they specifically referencing there? Is that the arrest and booking report? Arrest and booking report, and um, uh, it would have been accepted or approved by um, Officer Garriott. Okay, and once it gets approved by Officer Garriott, then she can be sent to the corrections facility or admitted into the it gets facility. sent to, sorry to interrupt it gets sent to uh an officer um, a corrections officer and then he also has to accept okay accept the report as well gotcha. okay and at that time she had the hobble on who decided to take the hobble on i did okay i um yeah i, I spoke with, she had actually started to calm down quite a bit at this point yes sir um, um she was for once being pretty quiet in the back seat not saying much. Um, at least if she was saying anything, it wasn't profanities. Um, so, um, yeah, I opened the back door and I said, um, you know, look, we can take the hobble off if you continue to cooperate. Um, we'll work with this for you. That way you don't have to hop up to the front door. Um, um, and we'll, you know, let your legs breathe or whatever. And she agreed. So, okay. okay. Cool. So you take the hobble off, do you give it back to Borisadi or do you help I actually went and put it in his car. That's okay. I said, hey, we'll place it in your car. Okay. So, so now it's coming close to, I'm guessing if you're saying you got to get there at 5.30, you have the deployment around 7 o'clock. Tell me about the determination for you to leave and him to stay with, with uh, Ms. Martinez. Well, um, you know, I, um, I told him, I said, you know, I have a robber deployment to be on at 7, you know, I'm, I'm already late and I hate for those things, but uh, um, I just said, you know, you're the second arresting officer on the docket. I said, you know, would you mind staying and you can, you know, sign the docket? And yeah, he said, yeah, absolutely. That, that's fine. Good, good to hear your name. Got it. So, um, and when she, when you left. Now, at the time that, that you were telling Officer Borisati that you're the second officer on it and that you were busy and you had to go to, to handle other duties. Mm -hmm. Um, you had 
at this point, obviously, I had already witnessed the, the strikes that Officer Borisadi had applied to Ms. Martinez. I did. Okay. Um, did that give you any pause before allowing uh, Officer Borisadi to complete this arrest and booking report? No. Yeah. How was she acting while standing in the cell before waiting to be admitted into the jail? And I wasn't there long. I don't remember her acting out at all. Um, but I wasn't there very long to watch or do. Okay. So, correct me if I'm wrong, you were not there for the entire incident that led up to the altercation between. Yes, sir. Okay, because you guys already um, left at that time. Yes, sir. Um, were, were, you, were you concerned about any of the use of force at the parking lot? Um, yes, sir. Okay. What, 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 what concerned you? There's quite a few punches thrown. Okay. Um, so at the time, uh, you were concerned with the number of punches thrown. Uh, by Officer Borisadi at the time, and yet he still made the decision that he should be the one to do the narrative report for the arrest report. It doesn't specify a time in there that I uh, became concerned. But at the time we're completing the report now, I didn't have any concerns of him completing the report, uh, the narrative of it. Did anything change as far as the number of strikes from the time that you wrote the report to, to any, any later? No, nothing changed. So at the time that you wrote the report, you had no concern with the amount of force used? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I just said I didn't have any concerns with him writing the report. Okay. okay. And when you say quite a few, what, what are you talking about? The number, the, the areas that the question was sent no, to? No, the, the number. Okay. Um, yeah, it just, it seemed like it was a lot, a lot of punches, more so attempting to, uh, control her arm, entertain her. Okay. Um, so you're concerned about the number of punches thrown, not the area they were thrown? Uh, a lot, a lot of the ones that I saw were mainly to the back and side, it seemed okay. like the pain compliance, uh, but I think the, I think a combination of the number and then where they were thrown would well, have concern me, such as you throw a few punches to the, to the back or whatever, and to get a little pain compliance right. and to get her hand removed is fine. Um, continuous side, back, side, back, um, I think is what kind of triggered a little pain that's some of you. Okay, so, but. Then to be clear, you did witness Officer Borisati hit her in the back and the side repeatedly. Uh, that's from what you can recall from the scene. Yes. Okay. When he's striking her or punching her, the handcuffs were not on you, correct? They were not on you. Okay, sir. And she, she was not compliant. She was still resisting you guys' demands for give me your hands, give me your hands. Um, prior to what Detective Cayenne said, had you uh, informed Detective Cayenne that you had told Miss Martinez, give me your hands, give me your hands? Not the specific words. Like I said, my normal was uh, put your hands behind your back, but not uh, specifically that quote, give me your hands, give me your hands. Okay. And you don't recall that, it, well, let me ask you, do you recall that being said at any point in time in the scores parking lot? What, the give me your hands? Yeah. No, I don't recall that. I have heard left hand with a cuff behind her, but the right arm was not. Right. Um, so, the strikes was probably to get her to, I guess, take her hand from in front of her to surrender to you guys' instructions. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you said it was in the back and in the side. Yes, okay. sir. Um, did you tell someone that about the strikes? I, I called uh, Sergeant Weeks. Okay. Um, so when you called Sergeant Weeks, you were calling Sergeant Weeks again specifically for the strikes 
that you witnessed Officer Borisati use on Miss Martinez. Is that correct? Yeah, that strikes. Okay. And I believe it was your testimony earlier that while you were on the scene, you did not witness or you did not, you might have been radioing, I think is what you said, when Officer Borisati put his hand on Miss Martinez's head and put it in, into the pavement. Did you, did you, do you recall witnessing that from the scene? I did not witness that at the scene, him pushing her head towards the pavement, no. Okay, so at the time that you called your supervisor, you were informing your supervisor that you were concerned with the use of force only concerning the strikes and not concerning Borisati, Officer Borisati, putting Miss Martinez's head into the pavement. Objection of force. Is that fair? Yes, that's my call. I just called real quick, just a, um, just a quick concern. Okay, my hands up. Uh, and what was, what was your concern? Uh, uh, basically what I'm telling you. Okay. Yes, sir. I just said, you know, there was, uh, I just said, I, I want to talk to you um, about something. Um, and he asked, you know, just kind of briefly, you know, what? And I said, you know, um, with the incident and the arrest uh, that we were just on, and I said, um, um, and I said, you know, you know with the with force and stuff used, and, and he said, oh, are you talking about with Officer Borsani? And I said, yes, sir. And he, you know, so I'm fully aware of it. Um, but thank you for contacting me. Okay. Uh, you know, the gist of. And that was about seven. So in that, you refer to the to the arrest and the incident, or the incident and the arrest that had just occurred, and Sergeant Weeks. I believe you said, responded that he was aware of the incident involving Officer Borsati. Yes. Now, we touched on this earlier, but is, do we know whether Sergeant Weeks was specifically talking about what happened in the Scores parking lot or what happened in the uh, Sally Port? Objection to form. I don't know for certain. I, we can only make assumptions on that. I don't know. You have to ask him. Okay. But there was nothing that you can recall specifically telling Sergeant Weeks that would have been about the scores parking lot. Objection to the form. I don't remember specifically mentioning the parking lot. Okay. Well, right before you went into your yeah. um, it was I was I was still a few minutes late, okay. five ten minutes late, so it was somewhere around there, just after seven maybe. Okay. All right. Um, and you notified him by phone. Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. And like we said, you. You did the docket, he did the narrative, you guys both read it and approved it. Um, what, at, at, the, at the parking lot of scores, did, did the actions of you guys begin to create a crowd or? No, sir, I, I don't remember a crowd at all. Um, I remember a white truck pulling up um, right about the time we took it down. Um, and then, um, I remember it was still there actually when I told you that time that I, we got in the canyon and I just kind of took that breather. Yes, sir. Um, and I remember it was still there at that time. But there was no, I don't remember anybody outside being you know, so focused on her trying to um, get her detained. But even after the fact, I don't remember anybody outside. Okay, and you are aware of the video that came out yesterday inside the Sally Port? Yes, sir. Um, let me ask you, were you, were you aware about the other video of the parking lot? Somebody called you this morning and let you know. I was, I was called, I was, uh, text, I was called about it last night, actually. Right. Yeah, called about it last night. Okay. So you, and I just want to understand this. You, you knew about the video the day before that you gave this uh, recorded statement. I don't know what day it was before, but it was before the statement. Yeah. I think it said last night, I think is what it said. Oh, maybe it was. Um, I'll just go back here. I just... You know, so focused on her, trying to um, get her detained, but even after the fact, I don't remember anybody outside. Okay, you are aware of the video that came out yesterday inside the South Fork? Yes, sir. Um, okay. Let me ask you, were, were you aware about the other video of the parking lot? Somebody called you this morning to let you know. I was, I was called, I was, uh, text, I was called. Uh, last night, actually. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And so would, the, would that mean that the, the night before you gave this interview was the first time that you became aware of the video? I would imagine. Objection of form. Sorry. I would imagine so by that. Okay. Physically resisting. Okay, sometimes things look bad, but are they justified? 
You see what I'm saying? So, but what you did by calling Sergeant Weeks was the appropriate response for everything, because all you wanted to do was say, Sergeant, FYI, yes, you know, I may not agree with everything, but we're making an arrest. So, yes, you know, I'm just keeping you in a loop in case you get questions. So that's fair enough. Um, did you ask her, was she on any drugs? Would it have been important for you to tell Sergeant Weeks specifically about the scores incident? Objection. Like I said, our conversation was so, so short, we didn't even get to specifics of the incident. So you guys could have been talking about two totally different incidents? It is possible, yeah. Okay. And other than your supervisor, did you contact anybody else about the incident that occurred at scores? No. I didn't ask her if she was on any drugs. Um, Did you ask her how much she had to drink? She, all she said was one cocktail is all she told me. Okay. Oh, what about, and you, you didn't speak with management. Did Officer Borisati, did you communicate when he came out of the business after speaking to management before you guys approached her about just anything? Like the reasons why management wanted her gone. The, the only thing I got from him, and I obviously couldn't tell you when it was that I got this from him, um, but he just said she was fired because she came to work drunk. Okay. Now, is that, are they talking about what you got from Officer Borisati? Yeah, that, that, the only info I got about the trespass and stuff was from Officer Borisati. Okay. And let me go back just briefly here. You guys were not able to get both handcuffs on. And if yeah, she's swinging it as a weapon, like I said, I don't think the video showed that portion. Yeah. You guys were not able to get both handcuffs on. I'm sorry. You guys were not able to get both handcuffs on. And if she's swinging it as a weapon, like I said, I don't think the video showed that portion. There was no, I don't remember anybody outside. But you know, so focused on her trying to. Um, Okay, and you are aware of the video that came out yesterday at Inside the South Court? Yes, sir. Um, let me ask you, were you, were you aware about the other video of the parking lot? Somebody called you this morning to let you know. I was, I was called, I was, uh, text, I was called about it last night, actually. Okay. Yeah, I called about it last night. Because it was a look bad, but are they justified? You see what I'm saying? Okay. So, but what you did by calling Sergeant Weeks was the appropriate response for everything because all you wanted to do was, hey, Sergeant, FYI, yes, sir. you know, I may not have agreed with everything, but we're making an arrest. So, yes, you know, I'm just keeping you in a loop in case you get questions. So that's fair enough. Um, did you ask her, was she on any drugs? I didn't ask her if she was on any drugs. Um, did you ask her how much she had to drink? She, all she said was one cocktail, is all she told me. Okay. Uh, what about, and you, you didn't speak with management, did Officer Borisati, did you communicate when he came out of the business after speaking to management before you guys approached her? About just anything? Like else? the reasons why management wanted her gone. The, the only thing I got from him, and I honestly couldn't tell you when it was that I got this from him, um, but just said she was fired because she came to work drunk. Okay. Uh, she came to work drunk is what? Gotcha. Yes, sir. Um, and what, in your short time out there, because you guys have just been on there for like two months, which is probably the equivalent of a couple of work cycles. Yes, sir. Have you ever responded to any of the calls with Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. And tell me about it. Was, was any of those calls you have to go hands on? Yes, sir. Okay. One, one previous, yes, sir. Was just one. Yes, sir. Was it a situation that got out of control or? And, no, so not at all. It was, it was, um, um, it, well, I say out of control. It was a domestic situation, um, where we were trying to, uh, detain the husband, okay. um, for domestic battery, felony and domestic battery. Um, and, um, and he resisted. The wife wanted to come out and, you know, save. And, and everything was acted within policy and procedure? Yes, sir, correct. Okay, nothing yes. stepping on out of bounds? Yes, sir. So you've handled calls with them before and it's gone well, but when, when crap hits the fan, things happen? Yes, sir. Right? Um, yes, sir, but... So, um, was there any other concerns that you had had other than the amount of strikes that was used 
during the, uh, during the arrest. Was anything said, anything racially, anything derogatory? Nothing that I heard from him. Okay. Did he ever, or, and I know you, you said you were yelling, calm down, calm down, give me your hands. Did you hear him yelling anything? Anybody, was anybody yelling, stop resisting? You know, I I don't want to take yes because I'm not 100% wrong. You know, so into, you know, getting your entertainment guide with the adrenaline going, I couldn't say for sure. Yeah. So you see how tunnel vision starts to work, it does. auditory, you know, visual Absolutely. exclusion and stuff like that. Yeah, because you guys are, you guys are doing what police officers do on a daily basis. It's a dangerous damn job. Yes, okay. Sir. And 99% of the time we go to these calls and nothing happens and it's peaceful. And then you get that 1% where you go to a call at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to remove somebody from the presence. And I don't think anybody signed up for, oh my God, this is going to get as bad as it did. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for us right now? No, sir. Do you have any questions? Take the break. No. All right, stand by. Let me just um, speak with my lieutenant and see if there's anything else that we need yes, sir. Um, to get clarified and stuff like that. And um, be with you and then you get out here, all right? Okay. Yes, I sir. appreciate doing what police right. officers do. Fast forward a little bit. While we're all right, can I take one, another bathroom break? Please? Absolutely. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good break. One should be there. We are back on the record at 2.04. All right, we'll just pick up where we left off. Okay. Journey arrest. Was anything said, anything racially, anything derogatory? Nothing that I heard from him. Okay. Did he ever, or, and I know you, you said you were yelling, calm down, calm down, give me your hands. Did you hear him yelling anything? Anybody, was anybody yelling, stop resisting? You know, I... I don't want to take ES because I'm not 100% wrong. You know, so into, you know, getting entertained that I would be doing going, I couldn't say for sure. No, so you see how that tunnel vision starts to work? It does. Auditory, you know, visual yeah. exclusion and stuff like that. Yeah, because you, you guys are doing what police officers do on a daily basis. It's a dangerous damn job. Yes, okay. And 99% of the time we go to these calls and nothing happens and it's peaceful. And then you get that 1% where you go to a call at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to remove somebody from the premises, and I don't think anybody signed up for, oh my God, this is going to get as bad as it did. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for us right now? No, sir. Do you have any questions? Take the break. All right, stand by. Let me just um, speak to my lieutenant and see if there's anything else that we need yes, sir. Um, to get clarified and stuff like that, and I'll be with you, and you can get out of here, right? Okay. Yes, sir. I appreciate Thank it. Not a problem, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Watch the video. You gotta get How, how old are you? I'm sorry, I'm 20. Yeah, so just like you. Your mom raised you right. Mom and dad mom, raised you right. Mom and dad raised you right. Mom and dad raised you right. And you keep that. You never, you never lose that. Even though we deal with the job that we deal with. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, when did you complete your RTR report? Yesterday. Last night. Okay. Yes, sir. Did you watch the video? prior the video of the scores parking lot prior to completing your RTR. I did, yes sir. Okay. Did you did you the video uh, that you saw who provided you that video? Yeah, it was on online at that point. Okay. So maybe from the news? Yeah yeah I was I think I was notified of the video was out there. Okay. Um, do you remember who notified you that the video was out there? There was another officer. Do you remember the, uh, that officer's name? I do. And who was it? Uh, officer Ledoux. Officer Ledoux? Yes. Okay. Um, 
And who is who is Officer Ledoux? Uh, she was just uh, a, she went through the uh, academy with me, um, the orientation portion that I jumped into. Okay. All right. Um, did you and Officer Ledoux have a conversation about this video? Uh, it was just um, she just told me that it was out there. Okay. And that was on the same day that you did your uh, response to resistance witness report. I don't remember. Okay, do, but you were, you were, you do recall seeing the video before writing it? Yes, this? I did. Okay. Um, and again, this response to resistance witness report was completed on April 29th, 2016, correct? Yeah, so it would have, she would have had to have notified me the 28th, I'd imagine. Okay. It's on the 27th, and then that was written on the 28th, 29th. Okay. And the incident had occurred on the 27th? Correct. Reference it. And I'm sorry, but what was the, what was, and the reason that you didn't do this before is because Sergeant Weeks told you not to worry about doing that because uh, integrity has it? The, the response to resistance report. Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. But then he did call you, uh, well, he eventually changed his mind and told you, or you were told something different later that you did need to fill out our, our, R and R report. Objection form. Correct. Okay. Moving from the video to base your narrative for the report, as far as oh, was it independent? No, I, I really went into RTR as independent as possible. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say that. Um, you know, looking, you know, seeing the video. Yeah, you know, I saw the video, but I, you know, I went in thinking from the time of the incident. Okay. You, know, at, you okay. said you said you actually missed some things. On, on that you see on the video that you missed, I guess time that, that happened. Right. What, what, what exactly are you talking about? I think there was a point where he actually pushed her face or whatever into the ground. Okay. Uh, maybe once, maybe a couple times. Okay. Um, and I I didn't see that um, at the time that it happened. Okay. I'm trying to. All right. I, I want to ask this correct. Okay, so basically what you're saying you missed was him pushing her head into the ground. What was the reason why you think he would have done that? Man, I, I wish I could tell you. Okay. I really what, do. I, I don't know. How many fights have you been in your life? Physical fights. <laughs> so if you don't know why Officer Borisati, did, well, to this day, do you still not know why Officer Borisati used as much force as he did? Objection of form. That portion was probably because of her uh, attempting to bite him. I don't know. That's the, the only reason I could think of. Okay. She didn't witness her attempt to bite him. Objection of form has an answer. Just being clear. Oh, man. Um, I haven't been in any off duty or any outside of the course of the job. Okay. Um, and during the course of the job with corrections in here, man, you know. Five, six, maybe. So, and all the fights you've had, did you, are you starting now to notice the tunnel vision you get? Hey, uh, absolutely. I mean, I I still struggle with tunnel vision when, when fighting now. We all do. There's no we all do. It's, 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 that's the body. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the body. And, I mean, you got the SWAT guys, and they train us that's how right. to fight it and, and, and do a lot better job as us who don't get that training. But when... Because what I'm trying to decipher was, did you miss what you didn't see on the video because you just didn't want to see it, or is it because, hell, you guys are both working and, and trying to take care of business to get her no, to just stop resisting? No, so it was, I think it was straight adrenaline. Okay. I, didn't, I just, you know, there's just some things that I just missed, and I, when I look, when I look back in the video, I know when he pushed her head into the ground, I was trying to make, uh, I was trying to communicate with the radio at that point. Um, so I think with just holding her down, trying to communicate over the radio, I think my mind was just elsewhere and whether, you know, I just didn't see it okay. or it didn't register. And so you, you, so you, so you never even noticed that until the video. Yes, okay. Sir. What did you think when you seen it on video? Um, it was tough to watch. Yeah. Even being a buddy of mine. Yeah. Um, do you agree, disagree, or? Disagree. Okay. 
Um, and, and like I said, you know something. First of all, because I can see you getting emotional. Because like I said, this was emotional for a bunch of us. Because I'll be the first to tell you, you guys, I commend you for what you do. I think the world of what you do. And no, you don't have a lot of heroes that will sign up to do what we did. Okay? So first things first. Don't you ever second guess yourself on this job. Because that'll get you killed. Okay? We can do all this Monday morning quarterbacking that we, that we want to do. And the outside world can do the same thing, but they, they don't have the balls to sign up to do what we did. Alright? So you got to stand up for that and understand something. Okay? When you get into these kind of situations, it can turn very ugly very fast. And I guess in your training is why they tell you, let's get this crap over as fast as possible. Yeah. Is that what they tell you in your training? To just get it over with as soon as possible? I mean, yeah, you want to stop. You want to, you want to overcome the resistance as fast as possible, yeah. Okay. At all costs? No. Objection. And a lot of times, when we see people that are smaller than us or bigger than us, it might get us to react differently. I will ask you a question from your training to now actually you see it on the streets because you're no longer in a stone fight. You don't get to land on a mat when you're on the ground fighting somebody. You guys are landing on hard pavement. So if you slam somebody's head on a mat, it may not look as hard. When you slam somebody's head on the pavement and you see it from a dash cam, it looks bad. What, what didn't you notice on that dash cam? Tell me what you what you didn't see on that dash cam. I did not see. Yeah. Uh, before, her fighting us before. Absolutely. The reason why we took her to the ground. Correct. Do you see her flailing the handcuffs to strike you guys? You, you're not going to see that because yet again, vantage point, and yet again, it's when somebody decides to start filming. So uh, that's what we do. Okay, we'll sit here and be the Monday morning quarterback, but I don't ever want you or any of you officers out there working um, doing anything excessive, but at the same time, you guys got to handle business, okay? Because if not, you'll end up getting hurt, okay? You got to remember that. So that's not what's being seen. And the head slamming, yeah, you might not agree with it because when we start looking back at it and now we get to see it in a different light while you're calm, there's no tunnel vision. Hey, I, I can't tell you why he did what he did, okay? But I do, I, I would tell you when you're in a fight, things happen. Things happen, okay? At this point, Detective Cayenne is specifically talking about the head slamming, but you were also, but at that, prior to seeing the video, you were unaware of the head slamming. Objection, ask an answer. It's an answer, sorry. Yeah. Um, yes, prior to prior to seeing the video, I didn't, I never saw or was, the head slamming was never mentioned. And so, yeah. Um, and sometimes, we, like they tell you in the academy, revert back to your training. Okay, you guys been on two months. Okay, so other than the academy, what other training did you have to, to to deal with this stuff? You don't have that. Okay, so sometimes people revert back to fighting and doing what they would normally do. Um, you get up and you get her up, and she kicks at you. When she kicking you, I guess you said something earlier about you trying to push her her hands up. Remember? Oh, yeah, that was afterwards. I was trying to transport her to the car. Okay, I just kind of answer. Yeah, so when she kicks you, what what happens then? I. Yeah. Um. Stand her up. She kicks. You know I. I think at that point I just really tried pulling her in the car. I think it was just, you know, get her in the car and get her secure. Did you I, did, did you notice Officer Borsadi slamming her head in the car? No, no, I I didn't notice any of that. I remember grabbing her and pulling her in the car. Okay. Um, and putting her in. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember that, sir. So you you told me earlier in the interview. There was, a, there was a time that she tried to back kick you, a mule kick you. And, and we set her up, yes. Right. And then there was one that she did kick you and she possibly contacted you. No, 
not sure we're getting to a man. I mean, I know she was kicking when we when we were originally trying to get her handcuffs, and she was originally stood up before she was on the ground. Okay. Uh, I know she was kicking. Um, she was, and then she mule kicked when I had her stood up in handcuffs and was about to take her to the car. Okay. Um, I remember by video that making contact, but that was, I think that was stricken from the video. I don't remember anything. Couldn't get to you, Joel. Was scene, was right. Absolutely, I don't remember feeling anything that she actually okay. did. Yep. And, um, and this is what happens. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, yeah, because I know the RTR report was a little bit different than the arrest report. Um, I think it's taking time to have everything settle in and, you know, getting, well, not getting much sleep over it, right. but, you know, kind of laying in bed and just thinking things start coming together for right. me again. Did you disagree with anything that was written on the narrative of the arrest report? Was there anything left out? Was there anything that should have been added? I think, I think I... I looked over at him and I made some corrections um, as far as, I think he put in there at one point that she kicked us and I said, you know what I mean, I don't, I don't remember actually getting kicked, I don't want to put that, because right. I don't remember getting kicked, so it was little things like that, but as far as... Was this kind of, when you and Officer Boris Saudi were having this conversation about what to keep in and what to take out of the narrative, was that all done at the Sally Port? Yeah, it would have been all done at the Sally Port. And would that have been done on the MDC uh, system? I don't know if it was done on that or if it was done in person, uh, us talking. Okay. I'm not sure. Disagreeing with? I don't Yeah, I didn't have any like questions like, why'd you put right. this in here? I just remember saying, I'd, I'd rather not put that in there because I don't necessarily remember getting right. kicked, so I don't want to put that in there. Right, so, yeah, so you take out something that actually happened. Now you should look at the video. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, see what I'm saying? But yeah. it's just because, yet again, we so, look at your perception, vantage point, but also, too, you're now, after the environment where you're fighting someone versus you being in an environment an hour and a half late completing the report, yes, sir. now you're in a sterile situation. She's in the backseat of the car. Um, you know, you're, you're up front. You got an opportunity to breathe, probably get something to drink. So you actually took something out that actually happened. So, you know, yet again, so sometimes when you write RTR, if you look at the video, or when you write the arrest report, Sometimes we don't want to embellish, we don't want to put things in, but yet you took out something that was pertinent. But it's understandable because you don't remember. And a lot of times you won't remember until you see a video. So what we're just trying to do is make sure that we clear that video up. So, um, because like I said, just like your news media, they get to see a snippet of what happened in the Sally Court. And like the only thing we get to see from the dash cam is what someone provided. But like I said, we don't see a whole bunch of the fighting before y'all go to the ground. We don't see her flailing and swinging with one handcuff on and you trying to wrestle her to get another hand. We don't see all of that. So, you know. And again, her flailing and swinging the handcuff. Did you witness that? Objection. Ask for answer. Join. Like I said, that was a part of the squirming and the trying to maneuver. Um, I never, I don't think I ever specifically said swinging, but yeah, that was a part of her squirming and flailing around trying to avoid us. Sometimes it's a small picture of an actual big story. Yes, sir. Um, any other questions? All right, stand by one more time. Let me just make sure we get you out of here. Let me get you another one. That'd be great. Thank you so much. All right. Almost to the end. Yeah. You know, because from the video, it's, you know. All right. Last question. Okay. okay. When, you, when you watch the video, when you watch the video from the dash cam that you saw from the scores, and you said you noticed him slam her head or push her head into the ground. Was there any reason you didn't document that as a part of the RTR narrative? You know, because from the video, it's, you know, I'm getting up and getting on the radio. Like I told you before, I was trying to document as much as possible of what I, what I kind of got from the incident and the time that happened. 
and I'm sure the video played a role in kind of what refreshed my memory. Okay. Um, but because of the way I was on the radio and looking up, and I, I don't think that refreshed my memory. I think that was something that I strictly got from the video. Okay. Um, and I just, I was trying to be really careful when I'm doing it, because I don't, you know, uh, I didn't want really to come across as, you know, like I saw something when I really went down, just the way, you know, I was sitting up and looking away trying to get on the radio. I still won't put anything in there that I, you know, that I didn't think I would have to do at the time. Yes, sir. Recall from your knowledge or based on the video. And, and in the future, in the future, if, if that does happen, okay, because it's just like when we testify in court and stuff like that, yes, there's things we recollect and then there's things that I don't recall, but according to the video or the interview, this is what was said. Okay, um, so you, might, you, you may want to document that. Like, hey, look, I don't remember this happening, but after seeing the video, this happened. Yes, sir. So, okay, all right. And, and that was it. Um, and, and yet again, I will tell you, okay. Uh, after this uh, interview with Integrity, did you ever supplement or amend or write a new uh, response to resistance report? No, sir. Um, excuse me here. Moving on. It's a video of the uh, incident. It's the dash cam video. Buddy, can you see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you making that another exhibit? Um, I can. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it. What are we at? Four now? Or five? Four. Well, let's make, let's do the IA of four and then we'll do this one as five. This one is five. Okay, gotcha. You mean integrity? Integrity, thank you. I'll get it right eventually. That was, was that the same video that you recall seeing prior to writing your R R and R report? RTR report, RTR yes. RTR report, sir. excuse me. Thank you. Okay. Um, in that video uh, that we just witnessed, uh, you see the you see multiple strikes. And did you see uh, when Officer Borisati took her head and put it into the pavement? Yeah, I saw when he pushed it towards the ground. Yeah. Okay. Have you spoken with Officer Borsati about this incident um, since you left the Sally Port on the 27th of April, 2016? I've seen him out and about, but I haven't spoken with him about the incident. Okay. I think during your uh, interview with Detective Cayenne, you said that you uh, disagreed with uh, the officers, Officer Borsati's actions on that day. Do you still disagree with his actions on that day?
Well, let me ask you this. Is the video still difficult to watch? I mean, it brings back memories, but it's fine. Did you notice how many strikes there were in the in the video? I didn't count them. Did you see Miss Martinez try to bite anybody in that video? I couldn't see from that if she was trying to bite. You could hear Miss Martinez uh, say some things as she was on the ground. Uh, or could you hear Miss Martinez say, say some things as she was on the ground? Yes. Do you remember what she was saying? It sounded like I didn't do anything to you. Okay. Could you hear either yourself or Officer Borisati make any demands? I could not have her yelling, no. And think you may have testified to this earlier, but you don't have, do you have any independent recollection of Officer Borisati saying anything during the arrest? Or of this, of this, during the, the time of this video, the time shown in this video? I do not. No independent. Okay. Is so Officer Borisati employed at JSO still? No. Other than Detective uh, Cayenne, did you speak with anybody else in Integrity about this incident? No, uh, Detective Green was there, but no, I haven't okay. spoken with anybody else since. Just the recorded interview? Yes. Okay, thank you. Did you do, uh, we've talked about the arrest and booking report and your RTR report. Was there any uh, report that you filled out for the uh, Integrity unit? No, there's no report with that. So no written report? No, strictly the video. And just so we're on the same page, you did not witness uh, Officer Borisati strike Miss Martinez at the pretrial detention facility? I did not see that. Okay. I have any further questions at this time? Yeah, let's take We're back on the record at 2.38. Officer Vickery, I, I just have a few questions for you. Um, when Miss Martinez was arrested on April 27th, 2016. You had asked her if she was injured and she told you no? That's correct. And did you believe that she had been injured? I didn't see any signs of any injury on here, so I didn't believe she was. And so, based on your observations and your questions to Ms. Martinez, under JSO policy, were you required to fill out an RTR report within 24 hours at that time? Now knowing that, no, I'm not required to, unless there is injury or someone complains of injury. I could ask you to look at Exhibit 1 and grab it from the pile oh. of the catalog. Yeah. Sorry. Just build the bottom. Okay. And at the beginning of your depot, you told us you were dispatched to a Signal 63. That's correct. Dispute? Yes, sir. Did you receive any other information about the call as you were traveling to the call? So the... Um, in the call log, it says the complaint at verse um, signal 2 slash 73, which would be a, a drunk or um, person on drugs, 
uh, employee refusing to leave. So next says the employee was um, drunk or on drugs and is refusing to leave. And is that information that was reported to the dispatcher from SCORES? Correct. And were you given that information on your way to the scene? Yes, in the call, uh, the dispatch screen that we get um, when we were dispatched. So prior to arriving on scene, that was what was in there. So on your way to the SCORES, you were told that the, it was, the dispute was the complainant versus a person who was either intoxicated or on drugs, an employee who was refusing to leave the business? That's correct. Okay. Now, we sat through the integrity interview, um, and I want to play a short portion of it because I think something was lost um, in the video. So I'm going to play the video starting at around 15 minutes into the video. I gave her uh, a handcuffer on her left arm and uh, we began to struggle. He struggled getting her right arm behind her back. Um, he then um, grabbed her around her waist um, and um, said, hold on, I got this, was one thing that Officer Borshine said to me and grabbed her around her waist and um, was able to take her to the ground. Okay. So we are able to get her to the ground um, and uh, by that time I lost control of her left hand. Okay. The one with the handcuffs still on. Gotcha. And so my first thought was to get that Real that yes, stop you real quick. Go ahead. Okay, so when you say you lost control of that one handcuff, so that means she was able to she she was swinging. And she was so, so she was actually swinging the handcuff as a weapon. Or so when you were interviewed by Detective Kyan, who brought up the fact that she was swinging first? On the video, I said that first. I said swinging first. And is that because that's what you recalled? At the time, yes. Um, in April, or on April 27th, 2016, how much did you weigh? About the same as I do now, about 162, 163. And how tall are you? 5'10". Okay. That's all I have. Uh, I've got one follow-up. Well, you want to see if the guys on the phone have any? Oh, sure. Any That's right. Anybody on the phone have any questions? None from this end. Phone's alone. Okay. Is uh, anybody for Mr. Borsati on the line? No, they aren't on. Okay. Okay, clear. Um, just one follow up question. Um, I believe you were just shown this, the catalog. Yes, sir. Um, and I believe it said some information um, about the employee refusing to leave. Um, does it say why she refused to leave? It does not. Okay. You found, when did you learn of the reasons why she, well, let me ask you this. When you arrived at the at the scene, were you made aware that Scores was in possession of Miss Martinez's personal items? Yeah, at some point while I was on scene. No further questions. Okay, we'll read. Actually, I apologize. I did, I did have just one one quick question. Okay. This is Sean Colon, and I represent. Uh, I help the board. I did have just one question. I know there was a lot of information today, but it sounded like, and this is pointed my question, have any information about what took place before the crime? I'm sorry. I hate to interrupt, but would you start the question again? You're breaking up. I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> He's still there. You, you still there? Yes. I'm, okay, you guys can still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. 
Okay, sorry, I thought I got disconnected. But the question is, I know that you arrived after being called uh, by dispatch. I was wondering, did you have any details or information about what took place in the club before you arrived? I, you're still breaking up. Did I have any information about what again, please? Uh, any information regarding what took place in the club before you arrived? No, before I arrived, no. And are you familiar at all with four particular policies? I'm sorry, are you familiar at all with... With the particular policy for scores with trespassing? Procedure or, poli procedure or policy for scores as it relates to trespassing? Yes, exactly. No, I am not. Thank you. Okay, then yes, no further questions. All right. Thank you. That concludes the deposition. It is 2.45.